Welcome. <laughs> Welcome. Oh yeah, that's a thing now. <laughs> you know, yeah, yeah, as as yes. doing like silly no, stuff, like... and then you saying "Welcome." <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Welcome to another TLU. Let's talk about it. My name is John. I am Ash. And <laughs> today is definitely not Wednesday, but we are live on Thursday. Um, again, every time we move or Thursday or Wednesday is because, you know, we want to try and strive to make this as early as possible, mm -hmm. uh, starting off at 7. If we have no alternative, we will start at 9. But that's why we either move it from Wednesday to Thursday or we keep it on Wednesdays. If we can do this at 7 p.m., between 7 to 7.30 p.m. Uh, yeah. But, yeah, we're live, ladies. Ladies and gentlemen, and who do we got here already? Uh, Bendiciones. Hey, lol Mimi. How are you doing? Que es la que hay. Que es la que hay aquí. And the man, a.k.a. Bambi. Oh, here. you I'm changed here. your Hello, name. Everyone. Yes. <laughs> Hi, Bambi. What <laughs> How is How are you, up? man? Que es la que hay. <laughs> By the way, I did get your request for the Ancient Gear Golem. Uh, the, the only thing is that when we do it, uh, when we do the TLU, let's talk about it. Uh, we do it through uh, StreamYard. So StreamYard doesn't really allow us to uh, put out entrances and all that kind of stuff. So it's not OBS. So by the next time that we have a stream that's like gaming and on OBS, you'll have your ancient gear. Golem. Saturday, probably. Yes. Mm -hmm. So you have the golem. Uh, change just my name. Nice. Yes. I like it. I like and I just said, yeah, the Mammy, <laughs> aka Bambi. Bambi. It's like the the name has doesn't have to do with the man me, but it's the Bambi, the name Bambi, Bambi, man me, Bambi. Yeah, who was Bambi? Uh, something like that. Uh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, it's been a it's been a week. It's been a good week. Yeah. A lot of. It's been cold. Of, Oh, it's cold in, oh. in, in New Jersey oh. again after it was uh, sunny and hot last week. No, I, I think there was two weeks where um, it was hot. The two weeks after that, it was raining every day. And now this week, it's cold. So we're back, am... back at it. Look at that. Yeah. Brought, brought the sweater out. <laughs> I'm hoping for the day where this stops. I don't. I really don't like the cold. Yeah. Uh for those who don't know, we live in New Jersey, uh, close to the city, where the cops always chase me right here. If you heard that, <laughs> um, <laughs> where the not really guys don't don't freak out like that. Um, but no, yeah, it's a um, it's it's a weird climate. So either it's cold, it's hot, but then not too cold, but then not too hot, but then it's yeah. cold again. I think it's especially weird when. Um, everything starts transitioning like right now we're supposed to be in spring going to towards the summer but yes, it's it's, it's been a mix of like being hot and cold and then everybody starts getting sick on top of the whole you know covid situation that's happening so we got to stay healthy and and you know drink the drink some teas drink some vitamin c so take your vitamins kids cuz yeah <laughs> Bien, bien duro, game it's complicated. It is complicated. It's, yeah. It's complicated. Yeah. I was about to look for something and I just said exactly what I was gonna look for. That's in the middle of my conversation. I said, a gaming. Oh no, no. Uh oh. No. Oh, <laughs> oh, you blurted it out. I get it. Yes. I get it. I get it. <laughs> uh, I'm just looking for something that I was gonna talk about real quick. Um when wait, what ah, there we go. Uh, that I was going to talk real quick. Um, where is it? In the meantime, can you let them know what we have, what we've had for the week, and what we have and our merch and all that? Yeah, sure, sure. Yes. Why not? Uh, so, <laughs> uh, starting this week with this week on the Legacy Universe, I got to take you out, Bambi. So sorry. Uh, this week on TLU, um, if you guys didn't know, we have a new YouTube video, which is the unboxing of uh, the MLB The Show 21 <laughs> Jackie Robinson Deluxe Edition. It's a very, it's a two minute video, but it's short, it's fun, it's funny, and it is already available on our YouTube channel. Uh, this actually happened during John's uh, stream on, when was it, John? This on Tuesday. Was on Tuesday, Tuesday it was, he did a four hour stream here on Twitch where he was building uh, 
a stadium, but he was trying to do a replica of the Roberto Clemente Walker Stadium that's in Carolina, Puerto Rico. And that mm -hmm. took him only four hours. And then by the end of the stream, uh, I, I let him know that the box was here with his <laughs> deluxe edition. So he did an unboxing and that is the thumbnail on YouTube. So if you yes. guys haven't checked that out on YouTube, uh, <laughs> now you can, it is available. Uh, also another update with our store, apart from the wonderful uh, Legacy Masters collection that we have here on screen, we have added these new designs, which is our first collection is called From Our Land to the Universe, where you can get our signature astronaut with the Puerto Rican, uh, Dominican Republic, and United States flag. Or mm -hmm. you can get the Legacy Masters horror section design done by Saturn underscore strawberry, or a Throw It Into the Universe t-shirt. That is a link right there uh they also changed the link of the store but if it's easier for you guys all you have to do is go to tinyurl.com slash tlu merch and you can get some awesome designs from yes there. i so, think you guys can uh i believe in 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 the command right they can get it yes you can you can if you guys put exclamation point merch it's gonna pop yes. up for you that's a it command will pop up that we've been working at. So that's gonna be all for um, the Legacy Universe. Obviously, yes. and between tomorrow and Saturday, this live will be up on the Legacy Universe Live. And I'm gonna edit some highlights so we can have them on our YouTube channel. If you guys mm -hmm. wanna rewatch the live or you wanna have you know little sections here and there available for you guys. So uh, let's say hi to some people here. A31P, how are you doing? Happy Thursday. Hola. Happy Thursday. Hope y'all as well. Thank you. Many blessings to you as well. Same Be polite. The, Ooh, oh, wow. The real, the real OG. OG is here. Okay. Ooh. Because I get it. Okay. Shout out. My... Shout out to Be Polite. <laughs> Listen, yesterday was my dad's birthday. Today is Sparrow Wolf's birthday. And yes. on Saturday is Be Polite's birthday. So that is true. The 24th. Lots of people. Lots of people's Lots of birthday. people's birthdays. So we, My we, face. We got to oh, you meant MLB. We we got to celebrate uh, on Saturday <laughs> while playing Little Nightmares, and we can sing all "Happy Birthday to Be Polite." So, yes, indeed. Pick a game. Oh, wait what a happened? minute. What happened? Okay, so here's the thing. Uh, the man, me, aka Bambi. Oh, uh, uh, I, I know just, what he did. Hades. He just redeemed points for Hades. Hey! <laughs> he just redeemed points for Hades. Ooh. So it's written down. Let me write it down real quick so we don't forget. Wait a minute. Oh, guys. Also, I'm going to show you. We have a new emote. Check it out in the chat. Oh. Whenever you guys see. Emo, yes. Whenever you guys see a huge fail, all you have to do is hit that emo button and you will see my face with the big uh, fail on the top. <laughs> So that oh, is that's a good one. Yes. Yeah, so that is available. But friendly reminder that the, that this emote is only this one is only available for subscribers. So if you want to get some awesome Legacy Universe emotes, all you have to do is subscribe for as low as three ninety nine a month if you desire. So hey, let me write it here. Oh. Points. Redeemed. Yeah. Bianca, Bianca already used it. Uh, I'm going to show you guys our other emotes while John is doing that. So apart from the fail one, you can get all of these goodies right here. If you okay. would like any of these goodies right here, these are the OG, um, the OG uh, emotes that we have on Twitch. So if you guys are interested in getting that one or our newest one, which is the fail, all you have to do is subscribe. <laughs> and that's it. I think I think that's all the updates. Uh, but thank you to everybody who's here. Hope that you guys are doing well. Okay. And now we put it right there. <laughs> yes. Oh, okay. Did I did I write redeemed right? No, I wrote it wrong. I, I wrote it wrong. Wrote, I, think, I think you wrote it right. I did. Yeah. Dean. I keep yeah. forgetting. I keep forgetting if the two D's no, no. are there. I mean the E's. Redeemed. You wrote it right. You wrote it right. Redeemed. Trust. Okay, for Hades. You can trust. Got me. it. You wrote it I'll right. You can trust. I trust me. you. I trust you. <laughs> okay. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Oh, Hades. So uh, we're gonna talk a little bit about um, what everybody has redeemed and in the order that you want me to do that now. 
Um, yeah, we could do it before yeah. we uh, start off. Yeah, yeah, for okay. sure. So I'm just going to do this really quick. Uh, this is what we came up with for today for the spotlight of the week. Uh, Wait, today. This was first. Yeah. Así, pero le iba a poner. Yeah. Oh, nice. Yeah. Um, <laughs> <laughs> uh, today, we are actually going to be talking about uh, Remnants from the Ashes in our gaming universe. That's the spotlight of the week that was redeemed by Ozzy and uh, Bipolet. And this is going to be the order that we have for the next ones that you guys have redeemed. So for May 5th or 6th, we're going to have Boruto. Resident mm -hmm. Evil 5, which was requested by uh, X Dex. We're going to start playing that next week. And then Kenichi, the Midas Disciple, uh, that's going to be between May 12 or 13. So after that, uh, I think we're going to, I think, I think we might play uh, Hades maybe after we play Resident Evil because it is gaming and we can incorporate that into our uh, streaming sessions here on Twitch. So that is yeah. the order for everything, and obviously we're gonna have we're gonna add eighty eighties, Hades, yes, uh, to this list. So, um, man, me, yes, I did, and oh my goodness, oh my goodness, oh I can't my goodness. do, I, I can't do, I can't do VR. I don't think I would enjoy it. I want to do it because you know me. I, wait, <laughs> I would do it. You already know me. I would do it if it makes you <laughs> if it makes you guys enjoy, but. I, I would do it just to see John because John gets really scared when it's not VR. I can't imagine when, when it's like something that's VR. So, <laughs> uh, well, all right, let's begin with the first news of the day. And this is, and this is, and this is, this is gaming for you guys. So Amazon cancels video game based on the Lord of, of the rings i don't know how many of you are fans of the lord of the rings i know i am a huge fan of lord of the rings uh and i didn't even know that they were actually making a game for lord of the rings like it was i know that they're um who is it i think it is amazon that is trying to make a tv show out of it was it amazon it is they are making one yes but yeah. i didn't know that they were making a video game I, based off of it as well I, I didn't know either, but it was knowing, news to me. Knowing how much they want to put into the series, I'm not surprised if they canceled the video game to give priority to the series. So. Of course, and I think that makes more sense. But uh, this article was from Collider by Scott Campbell. This was published four days ago. Um, uh, Amazon has announced that the company's video game division has canceled its massively multiplayer online role player based on The Lord of the Rings. As per Bloomberg, the decision was a result of a contractual despite between Amazon and Chinese corporate monolith Tencent. Um, Amazon Game Studios has been developing the project alongside Loyu Technologies, which was purchased by Tencent last December. Uh, following the takeover, uh, the two companies tasked with steering the latest video game venture into Middle Earth found themselves at the crossroad. And after near, uh, neither party could come to a suitable arrangement, uh, the game has now been canceled altogether. Uh, so, you know, it it, it, it is... It's kind of like a thing where I didn't know about it. Mm -hmm, me either. So it, it didn't really, you know, affect me. Mm -hmm. But uh, it says here, it's yet another setback for Amazon Game Studios, who is in the broad as broadest of terms, haven't managed to release a single successful effort since launching in 2014. The Lord of the Rings uh, can now be added to the discard pile along with the team-based brawl, Brawler Breakaway and the Relentless Studio third-person shooter uh, Crucible. Amazon might own Twitch, which gives them a huge percent. Okay, here. Presence I wouldn't be surprised in the about gaming that. industry. Yeah. But, but in wow. house, titles have never been the outfit's strong suit. Uh, lastly, it's a shame because there's serious potential in a massive multiplayer online RPG based on um, J.R.R. Uh, Tolkien's rich, dense, and expensive lore which has resulted in several sold games over the years, but nothing that's generated anything approaching the same sort of uh, longevity and immersion enjoyed by the likes of World of Warcraft, The Elder Scrolls, and others, despite the superficial similarities between the three sprawling fantasy properties. Um, uh, the game 
pretty much had uh, also uh, nope that news does not matter uh anyway yeah so they were trying to make this game for a, a you know a very long time and okay. they've tried ever since the 2014 release of what they said the lord of the rings game yeah. um uh, to make a massive multiplayer uh so this was yeah i i can't even say exactly how this game was going to be based off on how it was going to be started off as mm -hmm. uh because again we lost the opportunity to actually have a potentially great immersive experience um, which people are big fans of Lord of the Rings. I mean, like I know a lot of yeah. people that would even turn over a little bit uh, from playing uh, Elder Scrolls to just jump into Lord of the Rings. Mm -hmm. But again, they couldn't come to a agreeable solution. Um, I mean, a solution is agreeable. Like, what the hell am I saying? Uh, anyway. <laughs> um, but um, but I yeah. I just wanted to say that I think possibly, apart from the series uh, thing that I mentioned, I think I didn't know about Amazon possibly buying out Twitch. So I think that if that happens, yeah. I think they might want to focus on those things first. And then if, if the series ends up being successful, which I think it will be, because I, like you said, there's a lot of people that love Lord of the Rings. Um, I'm only missing one film, but I've seen the first two. And I think it's a really good franchise. Um, so I think if, if they're doing that to focus their energy on these two projects and then have be successful with the Twitch buyout, and then from that start creating more games and more collaborations, with people throughout um, Twitch, uh, I, I think that that would be better, you know? And um, I mean, if you don't have Amazon Prime, you <laughs> you guys should get it <laughs> because if they really are gonna, you know, buy out Twitch, then I think anybody who's within the Amazon Prime uh, subscription, they're gonna get a lot of goodies. Yeah, them, yeah, so. no, for sure. Um, and uh, I just want to say here, uh, we'll see you later. Don't worry, practice. Hard, yeah. Beat him if that's what you're oh, doing. Oh, I didn't know he was streaming at 10:30. Smash. That's gonna be interesting. Yeah. So enjoy practice and be good. We'll see you around. And then, Whoa! how you doing, Ozzy? Ozzy. So, by the way, for those who are entering, if you already know, on Wednesdays or or Thursdays when we do, let's talk about it. We're unable to actually uh, do the entrances because of Streamyards. We're streaming through Streamyards, not OBS. Uh, so I don't have that ability here. Streamyard doesn't even have the ability I mean, I think for me to could, do that. So I, I think what I'm going to do is I think there could be a way to incorporate the videos because they're so short. So I'm going to do a test this weekend to see if oh, that works out. Wait, I'm going to do what you're saying. Yeah, like a video. So I'm going to do I'm going to do uh, the test this weekend to see if it works. And if it does, then by next week, you guys should all have your intros here in StreamYards. So. Okay, I see what you're saying. I, I kind of no know what you mean. Yeah, yes. Yeah. Anyway, que la que hay, Metaverse. Ave Maria, llegó a Metaverse. Metaverse. What are Uy. you doing, man? What are you doing? Uy. All right. Que la que hay. Bueno, um, uh, yes, this is it for Amazon's canceled Lord of the Rings game. A very unfortunate end uh, for this uh, game, this popular franchise. But we're still going to have the series. So, mm -hmm. Can't wait for that one. Yeah. Um, now, next one. Here we go. Sony set to announce PlayStation Plus Video Pass. You got to tell me about this because you sent it to me and I was confused. Yes. Okay. <laughs> so. so here's the deal. I'm going to put a, I'm going to do a summary and then I'm going to read the article. Or should I do the article first and then do a summary? I think I think a summary would work. A summary would work uh, even better? Uh, yeah, all, okay. all, all together, even better. So all together, even better. Okay. Yeah. So <laughs> um remember when Sony said they are taking off the rental capabilities of the PlayStation Store and even purchase abilities that we had um yeah. as owners of uh PlayStations to actually purchase movies, uh rent them. Um, so when they took that off, apparently they were planning something else to not actually completely disregard this. Um, mm -hmm. And I think you mentioned it as a Sony uh, service, but 
it is kind of justice. So you were right Ooh, in that sense. La pegué. Yes. Where's so, my job? Give me a job. No, I'm kidding. Yes. Um, <laughs> <laughs> let me share the article. I think I'm going to get used to this, sharing the article. I think but... in gaming, because since the thing about gaming is that I don't have a lot of pictures because I don't want to just plaster the screen with like a PlayStation logo or just a console. So I think it. Yeah. I think it's good when you incorporate the articles in the yeah, in this so... section. I'm going to do this right now, and here we go. This is the article right here. Uh, so no summary is you know needed here. Uh, so uh, PlayStation Plus Video Pass goes live in Poland today. Here's how it works. Um, uh, PlayStation Plus Video is official. Uh, now from here on out is a test. So this is a test. Mm. Right? Oh. According to a new interview on the Polish tech site Spiderwebs um, uh, with Sony Interactive Entertainment's Vice President of Global Service, Nick Maguire, I believe that's the name, uh, the PS Plus Video Pass is a new video on demand app. If you live in Poland and subscribe to PS Plus, all you need to do to start streaming with Video Pass, selection movies, and TV shows is install the app from the movies and TV sections of your mm -hmm. PS4 or the media tab on your PS5 and sign in with your existing PS account. Uh, here's the initial lineup of films and series coming to PlayStation Plus Video Pass, which McGuire says will be refreshed on a quarterly basis. The test is currently set to run for 12 months. So this is going to go for a year. And I'll mm -hmm. jump back and start explaining exactly what it is and, uh, you know, uh, how is really going to work? On, even though it said it right there, um, so here we got PlayStation Plus Video Pass movies. We got Bloodshot. That's the Vin Diesel one. Mm -hmm. uh, oh my God! Uh, we got Jumanji: <laughs> The Next Level, the second I, uh, installment. I want to see the first one. Yeah. I haven't. Zombieland seen it. Two Double Tap. I haven't seen uh, it. Charlie's Angel 2019 version. I haven't seen it. <laughs> Venom, the 2018 version, and the I have seen it. I the reason like why it. it says 2018 version, there hasn't been another actual Venom movie. It's just there was another movie named Venom that yeah. had nothing to do with the Venom Marvel character. Uh, uh, so that's why it's named Venom 2018 because it was the only Venom that came out that day, yeah, that year. Yeah. Uh, the Equalizer 2, um, nice. Baby Driver, Not a visto. Blade Runner 2049, Underworld Blood Wars, Arrival. We know this movie. Uh, so underrated, but all. Yes, Sausage Party. I Inferno. I want to see Sausage Party. I think I would laugh way too much. Yes, uh, probably, <laughs> or be disgusted. Either one. Uh, American Hustle. We saw this movie. I love that movie. This is the end. Ah, it's not like it's not like everybody. Yeah, yes, in the gates of heaven. Yes. <laughs> And Bad Boys, the infamous Bad Boys from 1995. Nice. Now, these are movies. Now, for the TV shows, so we have Superman from season one through three. We had Supermansion from season one through three. Uh, Community from season one through six. Deadly Class from season one. Uh, SWAT from season one through two. Uh, and Lost Girl and <laughs> season one through five. McGuire says Sony is interested in seeing how Polish subscribers use PS Plus Pass, but he can't yet say when or if the company will bring it to other regions. Now, with this being said, this is pretty much very clear uh, on its own. Um, uh, wait, I, I need to read this real quick. So, yeah, <laughs> I was going to say. Also, ahora Sony Pictures van para Netflix y ahora vamos a tener uh, free movies too. Pero, also, be before you read this one, before you read this one, also, <laughs> um, I want to say that we have a news because uh, Sony actually reached an agreement with Disney to have Venom and Spider-Man, uh, Tom Holland Spider-Man films on Disney+. Plus. So I think they yeah. have quite a few agreements e i want to say to metaverse like <laughs> my my humor is really weird that's Sausage. all that i'm gonna say eh, but me, so, that's no. all that's all that i'm gonna say <laughs> <laughs> oh man awkward Pero, yes okay then <laughs> Pero de aquí, oh it blocked this uh, yeah uh <laughs> yeah <laughs> on 2022 <laughs> If you watch Sausage Party, you never look <laughs> at, at food the same way. <laughs> Saludos, Aldros. Saludos, Aldros. 
Es que I've heard so many so many things about this film y I, como dije, I have a really weird humor, so I think I might enjoy it even though I'm not supposed to enjoy it. Yo soy ese tipo de persona. Hay películas que yo veo y me río demasiado y John a veces está como que why? Yeah, yeah Tamo, we were watching date movie the other day Calla and me. I had to cut that shit. Like I, she put it on and I was like cut Quita esa mierda ya, please. Y yo riéndome bien How are you boca. watching this movie? Y yo me estaba como que... Y yo me estaba como que... Weird sí. shit happening I, in that movie. I love like really dark comedy. No, y, yeah. no that, was, that wasn't even dark no. comedy. That was yeah. disgusting comedy. Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was like not even... Dark comedy is still funny. Disgusting yeah. comedy is disgusting. <laughs> Okay. Uh, anyway, yeah, so just to explain real quick what this really is and how you can work with this is if you have a PlayStation Plus membership to play online, the one that you pay $59.99 throughout the entire year and you mm -hmm. get your free games, at, like two games every month or even more, um, depending on what Sony you know has in mind for that entire year, um, you're already able to watch Video pass. So video pass is part of the, the PlayStation Plus membership. Excuse me. So right now the test is only running in Poland. So they are actually able to watch these films that I just showed you uh, for an entire year. Uh, so it uh, uh, we just have to see how it runs. Uh, and it's actually a very beneficial service because mm -hmm. you get free games. You get free movies. You play online for an entire year, mm -hmm. and you get discounts digitally yeah. for the video games. So yeah. I think Sony has something up its sleeve. And yeah. the only reason why I think that they are actually sharing all these movies to Marvel and to Netflix is because this is on trial. This is not a sure thing, the PlayStation Plus Video Pass. So they're trying to see how it goes But in the meantime, they're sharing their property so they can still earn some profit out of them. Um, so yeah, I think yeah. this is a smart idea. And um, I really, I really st do still believe um, my theory of with the whole PlayStation Studios happening. I think at some point, all Playstations will have a streaming service only for PlayStation Studios, and you're going to be able to see Uncharted and Ghost of Tsushima. Yeah, and maybe they'll do a deal uh, with uh, HBO to put The Last of Us, or maybe do like a Netflix thing where they wait until it premieres on HBO and then it's available on PlayStation Studios. So it could be. I still stand by that theory because there's a reason why they're they're creating PlayStation Studios and trying to put it out there with all of their adaptations. So there's a reason mm -hmm. for that. Yeah, for sure. Um, Alguien habló polaca. Va a ser una cuenta polaca. You might have to. You might have to. Um, uh, saucy party fue. Oh, saucy party fue el segundo date con Osvaldo y fue la película que rompió el hielo entre nosotros. If you guys, Please. if you see, if you see that on your second date and you 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 get each other, se entienden con esa película. You guys are meant to be. Olvídate yes, de eso. Te lo yes, digo, you definitely te are. Te lo digo que ahí sí que sí. <laughs> oh my god. Um. Anyway, let's jump into the next news, and we continue with the companies that always have wars with each other. But we got Xbox, Xbox Live Gold requirement for free to play <laughs> games will be removed. Today, oh, today. So, what is that let about? Let me get you guys the article right here. Um, uh, where is it? Oh, if, if I pressed the wrong button. I need to press something completely different in order for us to share this page. Whoopsie! I had a uh, whoopsie. There we go. <laughs> <laughs> So Microsoft removes Xbox Live Gold requirement for free-to-play games today. Uh, this article was made by um, Tom Warren in the site The Verge. All right. So Microsoft is removing. Oh, sorry. Right here. Microsoft is removing Jesus Christ. Not Jesus Christ. No. Microsoft is removing its requirements for Xbox Live subscription to play for free in multiplayer games today. The software maker has been testing this removal over the past few weeks. And now every Xbox One and Xbox Series S slash X owner will be able to play for free multiplayer games without Xbox Live Gold. 
Um, Microsoft is also unlocking Xbox Party Chat and the looking for groups uh, featured as part of this rollout. Oh. Um, yeah, this is kind of scary for Sony. Um, the Xbox <laughs> Live Gold changes means popular games like Destiny 2, Call of Duty Warzone, Fortnite, Apex Legends, and many others will no longer require a subscription. Fortnite? For wow. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Uh, more than 50 games will now be free to play. Uh, the changes certainly make the 299 Xbox Series S console a lot more appealing as a device for free-to-play multiplayer games. Uh, Microsoft removal of the Xbox Live Gold requirement came after the company was forced to reverse a price hike to its Xbox Live Gold subscription earlier this year. More, I'm, not, I'm kidding. Um, Microsoft had attempted the, to double the cost of a yearly Xbox Live Gold subscription. Uh, a move that didn't go down well with Xbox fans. Uh, Microsoft quickly backtracked and offered to remove the paywall for free-to-play multiplayer games. I yo mio. <laughs> Lastly, I'm going to read this real quick before we jump into opinions uh, right here. Now that Microsoft has also Xbox Party Chat and LFG free to use, it leaves Xbox Live Gold in a weird spot. Xbox Xbox Live Gold also provides monthly free games to subscribers and discounts for the Microsoft Store. Uh, but most of its core features are now free to all modern Xbox owners. Uh, you'll still need an Xbox Live Gold subscription for an Xbox 360, though. Uh, Microsoft is dropping Xbox Live branding, referring to the set of software and, and services as simple the Xbox network now. Uh, the company has also been convincing its loyal base of Xbox Live Gold subscribers to migrate over the Xbox Game Pass, a subscription service with more than 100 games that is Microsoft's main focus for its plans for gaming. Oh, my goodness. Let me have I, a drink. I want to show you this comment from Metaverse because I think it says it says a lot. Ugh. He says, Vi gente hablando caquita. Like, ¿cómo que PlayStation no hace eso? Desde siempre en los PlayStation, los free games son completamente free. O sea, tampoco hay que tener plus para jugarlo. <laughs> so he's basically saying that he's seen people talk a lot of shit about why doesn't PlayStation do this. But in reality, in PlayStation, the free games are completely free and you don't actually have to have a PS Plus account to get them for free. And that is true because I've seen John download so many games and when he shares his account or or puts his account primary, I can play those games. Yes. Uh so, but that is that is for some games. That's not yeah. all the games. Yeah. But metaverse, if you do remember what games those are, uh those are you can definitely put it in the chat box if you do remember it. I do remember that that is true. I do remember that that is true. Um, uh, but again, it, it was a war. That's why Xbox, mm -hmm. that's why PlayStation kind of was winning the console war in those times even more because they had to pay for this. Now PlayStation Plus, you know, got added into the uh, online playing uh, mode. And the PS uh, Now, and, right? The PS Now is like a thing. No, the, that... the PS Now is separate. The PS uh, Now is like has, the Game Pass of Xbox. Has that always PS existed? And I and I just knew about it. It started on PlayStation uh, 3, wow. if I am not mistaken. I just found and, out about that, and I'm, I'm paying $8 because there's so many games like... Yeah, huge. it started on PlayStation 3, but in PlayStation 3, it was bad. Mm. It was like horrendous. But how so, that so really good. Here is how it actually started. We're we're mm -hmm. talking about Xbox, but I just want to explain the PlayStation yeah, Now thing. Yeah. The PlayStation Now started on PlayStation 3. And mm -hmm. when it did start, it still had the membership to pay uh monthly, three months, six months, and a year. But the problem with that was that you were able to play all these games, right? But you still had to pay for the game that you wanted to play. Ah, okay, no, okay. it's, it's not like now that you pay the membership and you can stream it and then if you like then it you then can you can actually buy that. it no. it's like it's like imagine if you That's purchase stupid. yeah imagine <laughs> if you purchase a membership card for when blockbuster mm -hmm. it, it, blockbuster existed like that yeah. you may imagine you're paying a membership card for blockbuster right yeah. for a year at 59 dollars <laughs> uh -huh. cool oh, you can play all the games you want yeah cool but when you go in in blockbuster 
instead of buying the game at fifty nine ninety nine, instead of renting the game at fifty nine ninety nine, mm-hmm. you can rent the game at fifteen bucks for a week. So you still be paying for the game, mm-hmm. a certain amount of of what it is worth, like one third of what it's worth, but you still have to pay a membership on top of that. Mm. That's how it started. Yeah. Now, That's at the end of the cusp of PlayStation 4 and at the beginning of PS5, now all the games that are there are free to play completely. Okay. You don't have to pay any additional amount to play those games. It is just like a regular streaming service of Netflix. It's great. You, you pay for the membership one, a year, uh, I mean, uh, monthly or yearly or three months. Mm-hmm. Uh, up to $59.99 for a year, and you play and stream all the games you want to play. You can so either download them. Guys. Yeah. <sighs> you can either download them in your system, or you can stream them if you have a good enough internet connection. Yeah. Uh, I prefer to stream them because it actually relieves me from space that yeah. it will be occupying. Uh, so you got to stream them in order for it not to occupy any space in your system. Yeah. Yeah. Um, and yeah. it, it has it has really good games because we were I started playing Overcooked, which was a game that I've always wanted to play, but it was <laughs> and Overcooked is really fun when you play it with other people. Don't play it by yourself, please. That's just that's suicidal. Um, yeah. But we were playing World War Z the other day uh, on World War Z. Up, and that was really fun. And I was playing Sonic Adventure uh, yesterday, which is uh, not yesterday, the day before, which is which was a Sega uh, video game. Yeah, a and, wolf. It's, and it was pretty good. It's, it's freaking good. cool. So yeah. yeah. And by the way, guys, if you don't know, I am going to stream a saga for next week. Starting off next week because Who something's knows? happening. Okay. I'll I'll let you guys know at the end. If you already don't, if you already know, then you already know. But I'll let you guys know at the end. Oh. Um anyway, so for Xbox, sorry, we didn't even finish Xbox talk. Yes. <laughs> um yeah, so the Xbox, this is gonna be completely free. They're gonna be playing online free for now. Mm-hmm. And apparently their purchases for I mean their discounts for their video games are still gonna be there if you are paying for the gold. Mm-hmm. Now, I don't see any point on paying the gold membership mm-hmm. to get discounts. I really don't. Uh, so whoever is watching this, take advantage of the non-playing, uh, by uh, not paying the gold membership to play online on your Xbox. Don't pay fifty nine ninety nine yearly for this, even though it's just fifty nine ninety nine. Hey, those fifty nine ninety nine. I don't know. It's just it's digital. So it gets okay. So he. Erase this. It could still be an advantage because you can save money by well, buying I mean, games digital. But is I like that's and remember that that's our perspective. But there's always people that see like something that they gain out of it. Yeah, and so, but but you actually get more advantage by paying so, fifty nine ninety nine for the game sell. for the game pass, so yeah, that you can have free to games to play. Yeah, yeah, mm-hmm. yeah. So so lastly, for gaming universe. This is something that I just threw in because um, I got a whimsy of this today. Mm-hmm. And apparently, rumor getting stronger of a Metal Gear Solid remake. So, oh, wait a minute before you say anything. I know you were going to say, I know you're going to go like that. <laughs> okay. The rumor meal is that there was an interview, and I actually looked it up because I saw the mm-hmm. video. Uh, there was an interview uh, pretty much made. I believe it was from uh, What Culture Gaming. Uh, let me see. Yes, I believe the interview was made from What Culture Gaming. Uh, they say that David Hayter confirms uh, Metal Gear Solid PS5 remake. Now, it is not confirmed. It is a rumor. The thing about it is that David Hayter, who may, who does the voice of Solid Snake, um, the original Solid Snake, um, he got a text from somebody. I forgot who it was, and I would have to look it up again. I apologize for lack of information in that part. I knew it. It was just very short. It was told to me, and I just looked it up, and I was like, whoa, right there. Um 
Apparently, he got a text from somebody that's very close to Blue Point and to uh, either Konami and got, has a source uh, that the game, the remake of Metal Gear Solid has been in the works for three years now. Um, and they haven't contacted him yet uh, to do any voiceover work. Now, it would make sense for him to be contacted for him to do voiceover work because if you have new animation, new moves, new of all these kinds of things uh, in this remake and extended, probably extended story or extended scenes, um, you might need the voice actor to recreate certain things and even adjust the way um, uh, he speaks uh, into how uh, modern this could be. So, and that was one of the reasons why, uh, from the beginning, Hideo Kojima actually chose to uh, use uh, Kiefer Sutherland for Big Boss in uh, Phantom Pain, uh, so that he could have a rougher, more grounded, realistic type of voice, not video game type of voice. Mm -hmm. um, I understood why Kojima did that, but again, David Hayter is also a great voice actor, and he could do a great voice of snake uh and that could be adjusted if it has to be i don't know uh i'm just saying but it is still a rumor but kind of confirmed by the voice actor that plays solid snake um so i just wanted to throw that out there yeah. um anything you had to say about them I'm just waiting on my in my throne, you know, just for the confirmation. I think I've heard rumors about this since uh, last summer, and I I wouldn't be surprised if this is happening. I think it's the perfect time to do it since they are finally gearing up to actually uh, make a film, and they already have their lead star with Oscar Isaac, who's going to play yeah. Solid Snake. So I think it's the perfect time to reintroduce the story into a new gen of consoles. And I honestly wouldn't even be surprised if in E E3 they announce something. You 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 took the words out of my mouth. I I'm just waiting they, for that. I'm expecting Konami that. Konami is going to be yeah they in, are in E3. Yup. And if I am not mistaken, I think Konami also owns Blue Point. Or sorry, Sony owns Blue Point, mm -hmm. which they have an association with Konami. Um, I think it's, it's somewhere in between that line. Um, so it would be in their best interest to actually, you know, do this or they have been doing this because we haven't heard from Konami since Kojima left, uh, in terms of like the I mean, video game uh, industry, obviously. As aside from Yu-Gi-Oh stuff and, you know, just keep releasing cards and all that. We I, haven't bet heard from Konami. I bet they're happy uh, now. We'll see. Um, I said, just get Troy. <laughs> I mean, uh, Troy Baker's already. Troy Baker, yeah. yeah, I love. Yeah. I thought, listen, we like we love Troy Baker, but he's in everything, bro. Like he's in <laughs> everything. everything. Like, just I mean, get good, Troy I mean, Baker. Mira, good for him because I, I think that being a voice actor is extremely difficult. Like even more difficult than than film and Broadway put together. So good for him if they're calling him and he's getting jobs. That's that's a that's a rarity. So and yes, he's a nice he guy. So you know. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay. Uh, but yeah. Uh, oh, and lastly, yeah, I'll go. I'm going to say it. I'm going to stream the entire Metal Gear saga next week. I'm going to start streaming Metal Gear uh, um, since the very first one. <laughs> John wants me to play. So <laughs> up until the end. Yeah. I mean, if there are moments where she can't play, I'll just take over. But yeah, we wanted to. Uh, Jesus. Okay. That face. All right. <laughs> <laughs> That's exactly how I feel. <laughs> anyway. I'll pass it along to. Oh no! Wait, wait. We got the. Uh, okay, I almost forgot. The spotlight uh, of the week for Ozzy and Bipole. Or Mark or Hamill. Mark Hamill. Yeah. Hi. All right. So the spotlight of the week. Boom! Remnant from the ashes. Oi. From the ashes. Bogodoks. Okay. This game is one of the few that we've loved to play together. Mm -hmm. The the co-op uh, mode in this game is really good. It's very enjoyable, very accessible. Um, uh, you know, the connections actually don't break. And again, this has to do a lot with uh, depending on your Wi-Fi and your connection. But uh, one of the best things about this game is that it also its cooperative mode is under control. 
you know, you can play from either two or three to actually, you know, go in deep and finish off these uh, demons. Um, and the, root. the, root. the roots, yes, yeah. the roots, which is kind of like ironic because that's what I enjoy about the game. So you're, you pretty much are in a post-apocalyptic world. Um, you know, the roots have taken over. Uh, in case of like our visual aspect, these are demons, but in the game they're called roots, and you pretty much have to fight them off and try and find the source of what makes these beings exist in the world. Um, you start off creating your character, uh, so it's pretty much an RPG in that sense. You create your character, you pick a class one out of three. Um, I believe, uh, do you have the classes already, um, down or no? Um, I can find them. Yes. Uh, so you, yeah, please. So you got three classes that you could pick from, um, and they all have, of course, different abilities to actually help each other out and go through your journey, uh, and, you know, just find exactly what the heck is going on in this post-apocalyptic world and we see this freaking animal here in the picture uh where we haven't gotten into it yet but we're getting there uh but all i can say guys is that this game is actually very well done the only thing the only thing that i have a complaint uh, about in this game is that maybe it's just me but sometimes there is a lack of clear direction. I don't need to be babied, but sometimes there is actually a, a clear lack of direction in terms of where you have to go. Um, yeah, like we're still we're still uh, stuck in the one where we have to find the entrance of the subway. And I remember that last time that we played, we actually went into the tunnels and we we battled a lot of monsters and we were like oh i think we made it and then we actually ended up in a tunnel that left us on the outside so i would say in that case um my recommendation for um if you're playing this game play with a lot of people yeah. play with a lot of people uh but i do feel that in the in the sense that um when you start playing it, even though it doesn't matter in which part of the game that you are, you do get a sense of how it works uh, and which monsters you have to face. There is a boss that you have to face in every single um, area that you have, and it's it's quite difficult. So I would say that, yeah, it's it's it, we had a we had a stream here on Twitch, and I think we lasted over three hours because we couldn't beat one of the bosses. Um, yeah. And about the classes, I just wanted to say that uh, in this game, you can either be a scrapper, an ex-cultist, or a hunter, which John is an ex-cultist, and I am a hunter. Yeah. And the, hun the uh, ex-cultist uh, usually heals, and then the hunter, uh, you're supposed to be in charge of actually wiping out the the monsters before they actually get to your to you or to your team. Yeah, and that's something that I really like. And uh, ya tú sabes, ya mismo, no te preocupes, que we're going to be doing this. We're going to be smashing it. Um, and that is something that I like, that I really enjoy about the game, is that we pretty much need to be synchronized in order to beat this. I know that X-Dex actually X, uh, helped us out in, in one of those and, bosses. And Paola, too. And Paola, and, and yeah, yeah, and the lazy pants right there. Yeah. Mm -hmm. But the thing that I really enjoy about the game is I don't want things to be that easy. And in my difficulty, if you come in into my difficulty, let's say I am in hard mode playing my story and you're in normal, if you enter my party, the the monsters, the the, the, the raids, the, the villains, everything, the bosses are going to be even more difficult. They're going to be in my difficulty. If yeah. I go into the difficulty of a normal uh, mm -hmm. difficulty being played, uh, it will be at that difficulty. But it will not affect the progression of the game. It will not affect your progression. Uh, something else that I really like is that when you are picking items, let's say scraps, you're picking uh, bullets, anything like that, they are actually shared. Mm -hmm. uh, the scrap mostly, uh, the scraps are actually shared. So that is really good because that way we don't have to, you know, 
<clears throat> oh man, I need to upgrade this weapon. Please leave it to me. Oh no, but I really have to upgrade it. My my sword and my wrench and my shotgun and my handgun and my firearm. You know everything. Yeah. You don't you don't have to fight over also, any upgrades. Yeah, you also get traits uh, based on your your what is your best ability. Like I remember the other day I got a trait because I was jumping over walls a lot, and they were like, "Oh, you're a wall yes, jumper. Yes, you can get that." Wall <laughs> and I was that was like, so weird, yeah. but so great out of nowhere. Yeah. It's like. You get this trait, this ability, because you've been doing it so often. <clears throat> so now your character can be upgraded and be even better at parkour. Yeah. So at parkour, I'm an yeah. expert parkour at this point. With, yeah. In so, I also wanted to say that I don't, I don't know if you mentioned it, but the interesting thing about oh, oh no, oh no, guys, his camera oh. died. So Don is I going to switch. Fucking hate this. Don is going to switch. In wow. Sorry. You can't I, hate it because it, it works. It's a good camera. It so, works. It's just it dies yeah. so fast. <laughs> yeah. Jeez. But, yeah. <laughs> wait, 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 wait. Bef okay. Before you talk, because then when we put it on YouTube, it's going to suck. <laughs> I mean, that's what editing is for. That is so true. That is Pero so true. I'll wait for you. I'll wait I'm for you. Coming um, home. I'm coming yeah, home. I'm coming home. Ozzy, uh, I want to play with you because I heard that you're – in uh, an expert in this game and i feel i i like playing this game but i love playing um in co-op going dark <laughs> bravo five going dark bravo I'm five dark. going dark <laughs> but oh yeah I, I don't know Charlie. if I don't know if anybody um, in the chat has played this game, and if you guys have, if you, if you can let us know um, any of your opinions, what do you love most about the game? Uh, while John actually comes back with his camera, or if if it it, it does it it has a mix of also was it Dark Souls? I think it was. People were saying. Uh, it has uh, actually. Uh, and oh, Bloodborne too. And Bloodborne too. Oh wow! Hey, yeah. astronaut. Long time yeah. to see. You. How are you doing? Are you still floating in space? <laughs> I think I have access now. Let's see. Let's see. Let's see if John comes back. Technical difficulties, guys, but thank you for being here uh, on today's edition, episode 19 of TLU. Let's talk about it. We're about to head for 20 episodes, and uh, John is about to fix his camera because it went kaput. It died, and we have an astronaut with us here. And right now, if you are joining us, we are talking about our spotlight of the week in the gaming universe, and it's Remnant from the Ashes, which is an awesome, awesome, awesome co-op game that deals with post-apocalyptic issues, demons, weapons, classes, and all that good stuff that you guys like when you play co-op. So I'm waiting to see what is going to happen with John so we can continue the conversation. Uh, Bianca says, uh, I like Ash, I like co-op, her brain, yeah, but not with John. <laughs> I mean, mira lo que dice Bianca. <laughs> I think we most days we're a, we're a great team. I would say, no te escucha. That's just so weird. No me escucha. Ahora sí te escucha. Okay. Now you're this good. is now so weird. Good. This camera now. Ahora que tengo yeah. la otra. I mean, I tried to. I tried to weird. use that. I tried to use I'm that one in the laptop here for reload, and it was it was not good, guys. But I mean, Bianca, you say I okay, I say that I like co-op, but not with John. <laughs> you wow. Uh, we actually we actually make a good team, honestamente. I think I think it's it's very rare the days where we get really pissed off at each other. <laughs> Even when that happens, we're just like, okay, we gotta stop playing. That that's it. Um, honestly, but, uh, we I mean we do a great team. It's, like yeah, it's and, it's. It, it's very rare that we get like mad or something. We actually work really good, like in here and in Fortnite too. We work really well as a team. Um, so I was gonna talk about the demons. Uh, the in another interesting factor is that each demon has their own ability. There's a demon that's an archer, and he disappears and appears out of nowhere. There's another demon that has like the two blades in the front, so he's guarding himself. Um, and with the two blades in the front. And the only thing that you can do, and this is why you have to play co-op, somebody has to go in front of the demon and then somebody has to shoot the demon from the back. And that's the way that you distract him and mm -hmm. you eliminate him. There is, another eh, eh. <laughs> uh, there is another one that uh, has the big shotgun. 
as well. The big machine gun, yes. The big machine gun. And that's that's the worst one. That's the worst one. So this is a I very... I don't like that one because you can't peek. <laughs> As for Abby John, I said, Ave Maria. <laughs> no. Wow, he stays dead. Awkward. Dead. Eh, eh. <laughs> no, but I'm not going with that, Maggie. I'm getting um, frustrated with this camera. Sorry. Es que la costumbre is the, it's the, oh, it's it's, now it's, being accustomed to using it, the other one. Be chill. It's okay. You got, you got a, yeah. you got a functioning camera. That's what matters. So, it's not even focused. Like you see, like Mira. you can't even focus. To... Um, All right, but, continuing. But yeah, um, we 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 really like this game. Uh, so thank you to Bipolet and Ozzy who redeemed their points. Um, yes. To play it. So lo que falta es que we all play, but it's all, it's only three players though. That's the thing. It, you can only play up to three players. Um, Fabio Paso. Fabio Paso, Rip, me la hagan para descansar, Fabio. Pero on Sunday we have Minga, the fucking B. Minga, the fucking B. Oh, jeez. We have that on Sunday, so we'll see. We'll see how it goes. Um, but do you have anything else to add? Yes. So hmm. the thing about the game is that uh, what I was trying to say before the camera actually shut down is that you really have to understand your character, and mm -hmm. they. Each character is literally, these characters are literally made to protect one another. And mm -hmm. if you are a great team, I, I that's why I, 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 thank you for helping us, but I didn't want to be helped like that because the characters themselves are actually made to be a team. Like you mm -hmm. can be a team, you can go up, but the characters, abilities, criterias, uh, 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 weapons and all that are built to help you beat a boss synchronized if you know how to play the game yeah. like well. So that's something that I really enjoy about uh, Revenant because I'm the healer. I forgot what the what was the name of the healer? The ex cultist. That's what the you are. Ex cultist. The ex cultist yeah. is the healer. Now I gained that abil that ability through time, and depending on how fast you're leveling it up, but I gain it by every hit, by every damage takes, that I make. It takes <clears> a really, <throat> it takes a really long time. So in terms of that, I think. But that's the, that's the, that really depends. The realistic like aspect said. of the game, I think it's really cool as well. Yes. But the, the time actually depends on how much you've been leveling up that particular ability. Because mm -hmm. it used to take a long time at the beginning. Now yeah. that I have every, every, uh, um, uh, um, sorry, every point that I get to upgrade my ability, I just use it on that. Uh, mm -hmm. So that every time that I'm with Ash, uh, if she needs to be recovered, I don't let her use her dragon heart. Her dragon yeah. heart is another type of way for her to like regenerate, refresh yourself. Uh, but that you can use it for your uh, partners in case they are down. Like if they're not down, you can actually mm -hmm. use those to revive your partner uh, before yeah. they actually completely die. Yeah. Um, and, so I that's the, I mm -hmm. and I have the ability to actually see, uh, showcase the enemies that are in the, in wherever you are, wherever you are. Yes. So you pretty um, much have x-ray vision. Yeah. Um, so it's uh, I. I honestly I like this game. It's just that you really need to take the time, and it's a it's a trial and error game. And the thing about the trial yeah. and error thing is that every time you respawn, everything around you changes. So the enemies change, your the area changes, the boss changes. If you have a boss, where they come from. So it's interesting in that aspect. But and yeah. if you reach the checkpoint and save it, your enemies are back. Exactly. They so that is well. that is the Dark Soul type of yeah. thing where, and even Bloodborne, where as soon as you save this, if you want to go back, you'll find the same fellas. Yeah. Uh, you have to go. Now, if you don't have problem with that, that's perfectly fine because I'm pretty sure you're the type of person that if you do see them again, you will want to kill them so that you can continue upgrading faster. And uh, this game allows you to do that like any other Dark Soul game, like any other Demon Souls or um, uh, Bloodborne uh, type of game will allow you to do that. Uh, Remnant of the from the Ashes will allow you to do that as well. Now, another thing is that you have to find hidden messages. Yeah. Uh, you have to, sorry, I'm having 
you have to Murph break. To oh, uh, something interesting that happened too. I remember that we had started playing this game, and then when we did it on Twitch, there was a lot of people saying, "Like, did you get the shotgun from this place? Did you get this and that?" And, and that's we were like, I, "That's what I was going to go to." And we were like, like "What the fuck? Where?" Yes. <laughs> like, did you get the shotgun? Did you get the the, the, the this so weapon? Guys, did you get explore. so explore. take your time yeah. to explore? Hit boxes. Hit 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 uh, any crystals. Anything that you see, just hit it. Go crazy, so you can get your upgrades and stuff. So. Yeah. So. Ex explore wherever you are make sense of what you read uh, because um, eventually you'll find something along the way uh, that is hidden in the game mm -hmm. uh, and it's very uh, uh what's the word it's very satisfactory uh when you find these hidden weapons hidden gems hidden abilities hidden potions yeah. Yeah. that can actually help you along the way in the game now you have to decide uh, what are you going to upgrade first? Because you can't upgrade them all at the same time. Whereas to one at one point, you're going to need your handgun for a very powerful enemy that only, you know, your handgun can reach that far. Uh, and your shotgun, you know, wastes uh, um, um, powder. Mm -hmm. uh, not, not powder. Oh, Jesus. Plomo. I forgot how to say plomo in English. I don't know. Gunpowder. 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 Yeah, it wastes gunpowder uh, if you're too far off. So mm -hmm. you can't. Like, the shotgun shells don't reach that far. So if you need to beat an enemy from afar, you need to know exactly uh, where you're going to. And lead. Thank you. Lead. Uh, uh, Aldros. So the game makes you, tr you know, think... Let's you be to smart. Find when we played on Twitch so I can put Mate it on the que llegado como quiera. ¿Qué pasó? ¿Quién llegó? La que hay de Angelo. Angelo, <laughs> ¿cómo está? And thank Lynn. you, Aldros. Thank you, Aldros. Yes. So I'm, I'm looking for the gameplay so that I can put it while John is talking so you guys can see us. Great. Then we get copyrighted? No. Do we will get, are you sure? I mean, if you get copyrighted on Twitch, all they do is mute the audio. They don't take your video down. I hope so. I hope so. Estoy afuera, so nunca vi la notificación. No, <laughs> do not don't... worry. Do not worry. Uh, but yeah. So it is. Uh, so, okay. So you found the gameplay? Yes. Got it. So, yeah, it is very, it is very, it is, it is a satisfying feeling when you do find these things. And the game allows you to actually explore. Some people don't like exploring. Oh, you're talking about hours. Oh, God. I thought you were talking about the game of the. A gameplay of anybody else. So yeah. So this is pretty much trying us trying to find a key to the ward. And yeah, then this is, this is so so you guys can get an idea how the game is and the co-op is. And this is the setup that we had on Twitch because I, I wanted to make I wanted to make it really interactive. So I had my camera and I had John's camera. So that way you guys could see us individually and th and then our gameplay as well. Uh but this is so you guys can get like a general idea of how it looks and how it feels in terms of gameplay um and this is me and then the the guy in the front is um uh <laughs> and the guy and the guy in the front is john bianca dice mira y eso de los puntos y cantan oh my god <laughs> whoa wait a minute espérate 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 oh well, my god el público pidió yo respondo no han pedido todavía nada, Dios mío. Ay, bendito. Ay, Dios mío. Ya, me, ya, ya yo estoy preparada mentalmente para cuando eso pase. <risa> I hope. Yeah. Para que no me pase como yeah, me pasó no. en Rilo, que me cogieron Gosh. desprevenida y yo dije, aquí, aquí se chavó todo. Pero ya. Yeah. I'm trying to connect something here. Pero ya, yeah, ya. Yeah. This is our gameplay uh, from Twitch. Yeah, so the, pretty much here, I think... Everybody was telling us right here to look for something in particular. Mm -hmm. I think it was the weapon. I think it was the weapon that we had to look for. Um, but it was super fun. Mira para allá. Ahí like on the right and on the left, going crazy with it. Yeah. This is kind of the menu where you have all of your things, uh, like your bandages, your um, the things that you have to drink to get better, and you can get poisoned as well. And you need to drink a certain thing so that the that leaves your body because if not, you're gonna keep coughing and you're gonna keep just like almost dying. And this is this is with yeah. Paola right before we actually tried to do the boss for the I don't know fifth time. Yeah. Um, 
Aquí Pipo le pregunta, ¿pero ustedes escogen las canciones o uno? <coughs> well, bueno, yo pregunto si hay una en específico que tú quieres y si no, pues y, me tiro y, una bien al garo. Yeah, and if, if we know it, porque si if we know the song, sí. we'll sing it. If we don't know the song, sí, porque no, no then me we digan, can't sing it because we don't know the song. We'll don't try tell, and look for the lyric as well. Don't tell me but, to sing Cardi B because I don't listen. I don't listen to any of the music nowadays. Yo soy no, bien classic, old school. We will sing music that is skilled. Yeah. Not <laughs> wow. Crap. I'm sorry. Okay. Este. Do you have I'm anything sorry. else to add for Remnant from the Ashes? No, no. Uh, 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 all in all, I love this game. I want to continue playing it and I want to get to finish this game because, you know, um, again, it, it's a lot of fun. It's one game that allows you to play with your friends and how and you know think like we have to think we can just we can't just go crazy and try to beat him like you know let's blow him up and that's it because there's there has to be a strategy for the healer for the tank uh, 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 you know it it actually helps uh, so uh, this <laughs> loca you're Sorry. mute. So, okay. Oh, here you go. Ya lo. Eh, okay. No, I'm going to edit that because I, bueno. I didn't know if you could hear me. <laughs> Vamos a ver hear si me. estoy ready. Vamos a ver si estoy ready. Yes. Anyway, um, that's pretty much it for the gaming universe. Um, let's jump into the movie and TV universe. Take it away, Ash. Guys, our first news for the movie and TV universe. I'm really excited about this. I'm really excited about this. Uh, Emilia Clark joins Marvel's Secret Invasion, you guys. So apparently, Uy, Emilia Clark, if you don't know who exactly, if you don't know who Emilia Clark is, she is the mother of dragons from Game of Thrones, Khaleesi. Um, she is apparently in final negotiations to join Marvel's Secret Invasion, which is going to be a Disney Plus series that uh, follows a group of shape-shifting aliens who have been infiltrating Earth for years. Uh, so if you guys had seen uh, Captain Marvel and if you saw um, Spider-Man Far From Home, these are the same creatures that are going to be depicted in the show. Uh, there is no information on which character she might play. Hi, Paola. Uh, there is no information Hello. on who she might play. Uh, what's going to be her story in the show. But another rumor is that Olivia Coleman, who is an Oscar winner, she won for the movie that she did with Emma Stone and Rachel Wise. Um, she is also rumored to be in final negotiations for Marvel's Secret Invasion. So nice. I'm really excited about this. I was I was telling Angelo a joke that I think people are going to get pissed off at Marvel because they're only hiring British actors at some point. <laughs> but I mean, they're, yeah. the best, they're the best actors in my opinion. One of the best. One of the best. Yeah. Um, uh, this is cool. I mean, we get a lot of people that have been beloved by certain characters. I mean, by the world. But uh, certain characters that they have played are very, you know, memorable uh, which some are pissed about that they ended in a certain way or just no extra development into a certain doom. Mm -hmm. But anywhere Amelia Clark goes, people are there. People will love her. People will like her. I, I think just she's like, great. I, I, I also think that she's a great actress. I know that she was great in Game yeah. of Thrones, but I loved her as well in uh, Solo, a Star Wars story, which... Guys, I an, we love it's that an underrated movie. film. I love that film. I, I don't care. Uh, I, I, no, I never understood the hate for that film. I thought she was fantastic in it. So I'm happy that she, you know, if something doesn't work out in one of the universes of Disney, I'm happy that she's getting an opportunity to be in a Marvel show. And I think she's going to rock it. So hell yeah. So hell yeah. Um, I, honestly, I'm excited for her. I I can't wait to see what goes on because as we saw at the end of One Division, we saw that Photon um, mm -hmm. is yes. going to go to space. Yep. We're going to see Samuel Jackson, and we and already I, see the Secret Invasion, yeah. which is it, that's that's actually I think cool she might, because I think she might appear in Secret Invasion because Samuel L. Jackson is actually going to appear in the show as well as Nick Fury. So yeah, he has to because he's right now in the ship of uh, uh in their ship, the ship yeah. of the um what's the word of those aliens? Jeez. Um I keep forgetting. 
guys, I, I'm I'm bad with names, and if I don't remember things, it's because I kind of deem them not important in the a certain scroll. moment in my the, life. But the scrolls, the scrolls, yes, the scrolls. Yeah. Uh, but yeah, uh, he he ended up being up there in the last film that we saw. I believe it was um, Spider Man Far From Home. Spider Man From Home, Far From Home, yeah. which uh, Nick Fury ended up being a scroll and her uh, Nick his, Fury. Was not Nick Main. Fury. It was it was Nick Fury. Oh, no. sorry, sorry. Yeah. You okay? I got what you just said. Yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Nick Fury was not Nick Fury. I was like, what? Okay, yes, that's true. <laughs> uh, but yeah, uh, we'll just have to wait and see. And uh, I'm excited. So Me yeah. Too. But continuing in the Marvel universe, the next news that I have for you guys, and we were talking about this a little bit. Uh, you know, when we were talking about the whole Sony PlayStation uh, situation is that Disney and Sony apparently have reached an agreement to add Spider-Man films to Disney Plus. And I'm so happy because every time I see the MCU movies and in the timeline order, I'm always like, I wish that Where Spider-Man is Spider-Man <laughs> was here because I, I actually I actually like the Tom Holland Spider-Man films, especially Far From Home. I think it's the best one that he's done and the best one so far in the MCU, not counting Spider-Man 3, which we'll see what's going to happen with that film. But basically, uh, Disney and Sony have reached a multi-year deal for the post-pay one release window, a pack that will make Spider-Man and other major franchises eligible to stream on Disney Plus for the first time. Um, the, flag the flagship streaming service in Hulu are among many platforms covered by the agreement, which the official announcement called unprecedented. Uh, a host of platforms under the Disney tent are involved, including ABC, FX, and Freeform. No specific plans for Disney Plus have yet been finalized, but Marvel fans have been uh, wondering when Spidey and the other ones would appear in the streaming service. So basically, it's going to be Spider-Man, Venom, Morbius... And I believe um, other ones as well. So, yeah, yeah. Finally, uh, that's all I have to say. Finally, uh, finally, Jesus Christ, man! Um, we wanted this for a long time, and that this is not just it. Like, there's so many things going on at the same time, and even Alfred Molina confirming his appearance also in the film. Uh, and he, Ay, uh, qué sorpresa! No me lo esperaba. <laughs> and him being worried that he was so old now that he was worried to reprise the role at that moment of uh, where Spider-Man 2 ended. Uh, so it was, you know, what, what do you, what, what, how can you say this? It is an amazing thing that we're getting all this from Spider-Man, all this superhero. And I really can't wait for Spider-Man uh, the third movie of Tom Holland Spider-Man to come out uh, this year. So with this being added, uh, just so you guys know, Ash is not here. She had to step off for a second. Uh, but I'm here, this face, ugly face, full of ants in his face. Yeah, it's me. <laughs> uh, but yeah, it is one of the things that we we're mostly excited about. Uh, now, this universe is actually expanding, and we got to see, speaking of Spider-Man and the TV show, uh, we also got to know that um, the movie of Doctor Strange 2 is actually going to be a little bit horrifying. So it's going to end up being, instead of a regular Marvel movie, it's going to be a type of horror movie. Uh, and it suits it well because when we were watching WandaVision uh, this year, uh, WandaVision actually stepped it up a little bit and st stood out of the Marvel formula. Some people complained because the end, oh, you went back into, oh, they live and all that kind of stuff. Like, hey, when you think about this, Wanda actually didn't do good for these people. Uh, these people were left traumatized. So in reality, she's still kind of lost. She kept her sanity. Uh, she never kept uh, that vision that she wanted. She never kept the kids. Uh, so she lost. The villain, I mean, the hero, which is one that were, was not on top. Uh, when she left, she even left with the book, the, the forbidden book. Uh, so she's trying to disrupt reality just so that she can get what she wants. So what I was explaining is just going around 
of what's going to happen. And I actually uh, brought up the fact that um, um, uh, Olsen actually said that one, the Doctor Strange 2 film is going to be a pretty much a horror experience in a sense uh, because it's actually going very dark. Uh, and I was telling them how people complained about you know, the end being a Marvel ending. And I told them it wasn't. It's false because, um, you know, Wanda never got what she wanted. And she left all those people traumatized. Um, she never got visions. She never got the kids. She just left. She was all alone. And that's why she's provoking all this that we're about to see in Doctor Strange too. Uh, so it's one of the things where, you know, uh, I'm excited for the Marvel Universe either way. But yeah, that's pretty much it. Ash is back. She'll continue with the uh, uh, movies and TV. And uh, you got anything to say about this before we continue? My mic is muted. I'm so sorry. Can you? Yes, hear me it now? is as okay, always. So yes. sorry. Um. So no, I'm 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 excited for this, and uh, for sure, I think I've seen Far From Home more than seven times. Don't judge me. I love that film so much. I think it's a. Uh, yeah. It's perfect between between and the, the concept, music from Mysterio oh. between between the concept of the film and <clears throat> and Jake Gyllenhaal as Mysterio. I think it's a it's a fantastic film. So I will probably see these films when uh, they end up on Disney Plus. So I'm really excited. But we continue with Marvel guys because Marvel is on fire. And this week we finally have the first look and teaser trailer release for Shang Chi. And the legend of the Ten Rings. Let me know in the comments. Let us know in the comments. Did you guys see this trailer? This teaser trailer? Okay. I think everybody did. It's pretty sick, I guys. I think you guys did. It's pretty sick, guys. Uh, so uh, this is a, a sweeping superhero epic that combines emotional family drama with uh, gravity-defying martial arts actions. Um <sighs> Entertainment Weekly also released uh, some first look pictures, and this is our main character, uh, Shang Chi. And basically, we're just gonna talk about the trailer and our reactions. And shout out to Angelo because I think he's he actually saw our reaction in real time because he called us to see yeah. to watch us <laughs> react to the trailer, which I thought was oh 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 yeah, which I thought was really funny. So um, yeah. I. I'm really excited for this new Marvel phase because it feels so different, but it feels so right. It feels like we're getting stories that deserve to be on screen. And I'm really excited to see this film. I think it combines really well that, uh, you know, uh, uh, that that Chinese fantasy aspect of of of, of films of the Chinese, Chinese films, fantasy, yeah, yes, yeah, Chinese fantasy and uh, the 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 Marvel gimmick and formula that we know and. I love this trailer. I was rooting for it. I was clapping. I was like, oh my God, what is this? So yes. I, it's a great teaser trailer. And that's all that we're going to see, guys. We're not going to see any more trailers until the movie comes out in September 3rd, hopefully. Yeah, so, we're done with that. That's, yeah, that's pretty it, much it, what we're going to watch. Yeah. But um, man, I'm really excited for this because, uh, again, the Chinese fantasy, uh, it is insane. Uh, we've seen like Kung Fu Panda, Enter the Dragon, and Shaolin Monks. We've seen like uh, I forgot the movie where Jackie Chan fights uh, Jet Li, but it's like another fantasy. Um, mm. People, I, I think you, I think you know the name of this movie where Jackie Chan and Jet Li meet, and and it's the Monkey King. Jet Li is the Monkey King. What was that Chinese movie? I mean, what was that movie? Um, let us know. I, you know you know what let me look at, at the movie uh Jackie Chan and Jet Li movie movie ah Forbidden Kingdom aquí está Forbidden hey okay thank you thank you Forbidden oh Kingdom you want to oh my god are you sure you want to do this I mean there's no audio I mean ah yo lo quito I mean, so, I'm I'm just looking. I can out for I can Pete. I can fast forward it to you know certain parts and stuff like that. So yeah, you, you yeah. guys can have an idea of what the no, trailer, just, how the trailer looks, just in I case. I don't trust copyright. these people with the copyright thing and all that kind of stuff. Yeah, I'm just gonna uh, show you. Yeah, yeah, keep going, keep going. The trailer looks great, but the <laughs> but the suit looks uncomfortable. Um, I mean, 
We'll see because he fights in it, apparently. Now, one thing that I wanted to talk about, but it's really quick. I don't want to dive into it too much. I just wanted to make note of this. It's that as soon as the trailer came out, there was already, uh, you know, articles and comments and here's things in there to try and take it down. And, you know, it, it, it really was irritating and it was something that I can't believe people like this exist. Like finding dirt on the actors, on uh, on things of the past, on the film, I mean, try and take it down. Happen. That's always gonna. And happen. man, come like fucking come on, like this, this is representation that right here, like mm -hmm. it's a full on Asian movie that is in Marvel. Mm -hmm. It's exciting. It's exhilarating. I'm getting goosebumps right now. Yeah. Uh, and and the other day, I think the first day it came out. They were resurfacing some tweets that the main actor had tweeted, like in 2012, of our Cardi B's music. I mean, our Cardi B, um, um, Nicki Minaj's music. It's a long mm. time ago, guys. Like, what the heck? Anyway, I, it reminded me of the Gina Carano thing, like Henry Cavill dated her like 10 years ago. It's like, Henry Cavill is, is fine. What that, does that have to do with this shit? No, no, like, no. Seriously? But okay, that's the that's the thing that I always say about these rants and these cancel cultures. It, yeah. it, we can't pay attention to this. Like the whole Henry Cavill thing happened and nothing happened to him. And now he, apparently he has a new girlfriend and people of are course. crying because of that. And I'm just like, why are you crying? Like he's uh, it's a like, he's like going to stay single for his, his entire life. Like he's hello. a, he's a human guys. He's going to get a girlfriend eventually. Um, yeah. so, so I, yeah, I, I, anyway, first. I, we can't yeah. do that. Anyway. Yeah, guys, I, I just need to bring it up because you know, it's a little bit unfair uh and i wanted to bring it up because this film you know deserves what it's coming to it which is very good vibes very good things great uh, representation of you know the chinese fantasy uh, uh you know of kung fu of the rings and of the marvel lore uh and it's coming out on september 3rd so i really cannot wait to see and we finally see the original mandarin not the freaking one that we said. saw in Iron Man 3. I was like, that's the one. So, that's the one. That's the Iron that's, Man 2. This is the actual Mandarin. <laughs> Iron Man 2, I think it was. Funny oh. story. I don't know if I told oh. you this, but. I think you want. I think we're I, talking about the same thing right now. Let's well, see. Well, no, no, I don't think so. Uh, but bef like way oh. before <laughs> I met you. Way before oh, I no, met you. No, we don't think so. No, I don't um, think so. <laughs> way before I met you, I actually saw Iron Man 2 with a friend. And it was, be she told me. Because I was like, I, I haven't seen, I wasn't into the MCU at this point. Um, mm -hmm. And I was like, but I haven't seen Iron Man 1. Why are you taking me to see the sequel? And she was like, oh, it's fine. I'll explain it to you. And I think she gave me like the daintiest explanation. And I saw Iron Man 2 and I hated it without, because, and it was because I didn't see the first one. So I didn't understand anything. And it was not an appealing movie to, for me to see at all. So that was my In first experience in, for the, with the MCU per se, not the best one. In her defense and in your mm -hmm. defense, yeah, it might be the most floja. Yeah. Some people say it's the third one. No, um, the second one. Yeah, it, it might, la más floja, it might be that one. Yeah. Now, yeah, that's all I gotta say. Anyway, yeah, <laughs> Shang-Chi, September 3rd, Shang-Chi and the Legend of the Ten Rings. Are you gonna go and watch it? Are you gonna yeah. be wearing ten rings or no ring at all? What? Yes. Okay. Okay. Dad, dad joke sucked. All right, continue. <laughs> Guys, he's he he's making dad jokes, and we don't even have children yet. Like, we have a sh we 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 were our children are not ready for us. We're not no, ready no. for those jokes. <laughs> They're not ready for dad us. Shut up. Um. <laughs> So the next news that I have, this is something that my mom sent me and I remember my reaction when she told me, so I had to put this here, but Vin Diesel oh, is, said, man. is set to star in a <laughs> Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Rock'em Sock'em Robots. Film. Uh, so basically Mattel, uh, the company's film division has announced plans to develop Rock'em Sock'em, the tabletop game featuring battling robots as a live action movie starting Vin Diesel. Uh, something interesting is that Ryan Engley, who wrote Rampage with which starred Dwayne Johnson and oh, Liam Neeson, the curious. commuter, 
He actually penned the screenplay. Uh, the story follows a father, played by Vin Diesel, and a son who form an unlikely bond with an advanced war machine. The role of Diesel's character's son has not been cast yet. I think there is a film... Uh, thank you, Aldros. I was just yes. about to mention that. I'm like, I, why are you making a copy of something that already exists thank called you. Real Steel with Hugh Jackman? It's like, <laughs> when you hear the synopsis of this story, it's like, what? I was going to say, doesn't this, the, Real Steel is with Hugh Jackman, right? What, what, I'm sorry, say that again? Real Steel is with Hugh Jackman? The film? Yeah, with Hugh Jackman. With Hugh I Jackman, was, yeah. I was a way better say, film. I was about to say. I mean, I haven't why, seen this film either, but I, 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 I've seen Real Steel, but I was about to say, like, why does this? No, I mean, like, I haven't seen like... this film that has not been out yet, but I've seen Real oh, Steel. Oh, I mean, like, yeah. it's um, the... but, but I've, I've been, I've, I've, that's the first thing that I said. I was like, Ay, Titi Bianca, busca me. I was like, um, <laughs> but. Yeah, I I I was thinking like it, this sounds like that Hugh Jackman movie with the kid and the robot, and then they bond over it, and I I don't know, I don't know. Yeah, they're trying to cop. I don't know. I'm but, falling. Sorry. But my yeah, mom, but my mom sent me. She sent me this uh okay. this news, and I remember the the only thing that came out of my <sighs> mouth was like, "Ay, por Why? Dios." <laughs> <laughs> uh, Literally. I was like, oh, oh my god, boy, like, yes. <laughs> <laughs> Yo, again, nothing against Vin Diesel. And, I, I, and somebody was saying, like, that's yeah. hilarious. This movie is about, you got it, family. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's about cars, but it's about family. It's about family. Yeah. And stop being about cars probably after the fourth <laughs> one. Or in the fourth one I after mean, they're that. Going Apparently they're going to space now. I haven't seen the last trailer because I have no interest in seeing Yo, uh, Mio, F9. How are we doing so. this still? Jesus Christ. But you know why? You know why this, this, <laughs> you know why these movies continue to be Mami made? Sabe. Mami sabe. <laughs> you know why these movies continue to be made? Because people still go and see them. They pay Because people still they go and money. see them. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. So again, here here's the deal with this. I am I'm I'm not frustrated. I'm just like, okay, I give up. You know, any movie that is made is because there is an audience that will go and pay from seven to twenty bucks <laughs> to go and see this film. Yo me <laughs> I think that he's trying to make a new franchise. Mira, I yo digo que entertainment is dead. Entertainment is dead. Bye bye. It could be. Bye bye entertainment. And I think that after this, um, it's just like Transformers. It's like, yes, people were getting like, ah, oh, Transformers, like, oh, Transformers, Transformers. But again, you complain about Transformers, you complain about Fast and the Furious, and you still pay the the money to actually watch the film. If you want this film to stop being made, stop watching them. Stop watching the one that comes out. But again, you know, if it makes money, you know, go ahead, man. That's how you're making your career. Good on you, man. You're at least recognized for something that's still it's still good. Like in the mind of somebody, it's still some it's still a great franchise in a sense of like, wow, there's no other franchise like Fast and the Furious. Still, yeah. there's no has, other franchise. It has it has, has its audience. It has its audience. Yeah. Has it changed from time to time from movie to movie? Yes, it has. Has it changed absurdly? Yes. But it's still its own thing. And you cannot take that away from Vin Diesel because he's been there from beginning to I think it's going to be the end when they go to the moon. So mm -hmm. I have no idea. But just to read a few comments right here. Oh, sorry. That one was the one I was going to touch. Yeah. Uh, why do they attach a rocket in a car? <laughs> it would have been easier to hijack an actual spaceship. Sí, pero el droge es que la lógica en Fast and the Furious no existe. So no it existe. doesn't exist. Y acuérdate, right. it's all exist. about the cars. Exactly. But there's also family. Porque entonces, porque entonces they, they hi for the cars. Vamos a decir, they hijack an actual spaceship. ¿verdad? Y la gente lo primero que va a decir es, oh, mano, this is Fast and the Furious. There should have been a car in space. That's the first thing that they're going to say. So era imposible yeah. hacerlo de esa forma. Fast and the Furious died with Paul. That was the Walker. best one that I saw. My my favorite one it's is the first been one. A long day. Mira, I'm Bianca. You, my friend. 
I just love that song. But I don't know. Favorite, I don't know it fully. But I, that's the, the my favorite ones are the first one. I love Tokyo Drift, and I love. I know a lot of people that hate Tokyo Drift, and then the one where they said goodbye to Paul Walker was actually really good. I hadn't seen the the other Fast and the Furious, but when he passed away, we actually went to the movies to see it to see how they were going to send him off, and it was fantastic. That whole sequence of them in the, in both cars, and then Paul Walker's car as you know he leaves, and then Vin Diesel goes to the other side. It was perfect. That, that was heartbreaking right there. That, that was really, really heartbreaking. And after, and that, like, oh, and after that, we, we didn't we didn't go to see the other ones in the movies. That was it. Yeah. So. And algo se tiene que entrenar. Entretener. Um, entretener. entretener. Entre, entre, entretener. Oh, oh. Sí. That's, okay, what she, entretener. that's what she meant. That's what right, she meant. Right, right, right. Okay, got yeah. it, got it. Yeah. But anyway, yeah, that's, yeah. I think that anything else you got to say about... I mean, Another we don't. Another Vin Diesel franchise beginning movie. We're not gonna know until it comes out. That's it. I do have to say the only thing I do have to say about Vin Diesel. I do believe that he is a person that believes in film because he actually went That's to. That's what I'm saying. Like, I gotta give it to him. Right. He went to a Dominican Republic and he actually opened a film studio over there. Like, he signed all the contracts and all that stuff, and he's gonna be producing uh, films and and and. Uh, creating jobs for people in the Dominican Republic. So I do have to, I, I have to think that his That's heart- That's so amazing, man. His That's heart so is, amazing. His heart is in the right place. I just think he doesn't pick the right projects. That's just it. So I, I can Honestly, separate one thing from I'll the other. I'll tell you this. <clears throat> I will slightly disagree with you. Mm -hmm. Only with the logistic here. Yeah. I think he picks the right projects to uh -huh. film. In terms of- in terms of money, Quakich. that Quakich. is actually yeah, Quachaching. Quachaching. He actually picks the right projects. Yeah. He knows his ability as an actor. He is aware. I think he's really aware of his ability as an actor. So he knows where to go, and I think he's the smartest person for doing that. And I think he stuck with Fast and the Furious because he knew what he had till he could find something else. Yeah. So I think. Honestly, and I'll give you praise, Vin Diesel. Honestly, you're the man for this, but you still do know what you're doing, even yeah. though in terms of story and certain lack of things and you know craziness outside of logistics and stuff like that. These movies are. It is still your thing, and mm. you've been smart about it. You've been still earning that paycheck. So, whatever anybody says, including me or anyone, you know, in the future, and who who knows, maybe I one day end up in a franchise that nobody likes, but everybody keeps watching. It's like mm -hmm. I'm gonna keep watching it until I stop earning those 50 millions every year. Yeah. So yeah. you yeah. know, it's a, so it's like that, you know, and, and I get it. So he want he wants to feed his own, so that's how he's gonna do it. So kudos to you, my friend. Salute to you. Uh, Salute. but the last news that I have for the movie slash TV universe, and then after this, we are actually going to jump into uh Episode five of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier, which ends tomorrow. You guys, se acabó lo que será, ¿eh? um, and we're gonna wrap up our show with that, which is which we're an hour and thirty three minutes in. So we've it's done good today. so far. We've done good today. Mm -hmm. The next news that I have is for fans of Cobra Kai and The Witcher, which we love, and it is that Cobra Kai <laughs> season four and The Witcher <laughs> season two will premiere on Netflix this year this year yes so basically yes um, cobra kai the witcher and you which is a show that i've heard about a lot but i don't i don't watch it we'll be happy to learn that all three shows will be debuting next season new seasons later this year uh so the release dates are scheduled for the quarter four of 2021 which means either in october november and or december Uh, this news was revealed earlier today by Netflix chief content officer Ted Sarandos during the company's quarter one investor video. So this is really exciting, especially in the times where we live, where COVID has, you know, delayed everything. And I think Cobra Kai was filming um, during COVID. And I know I definitely know that The Witcher was filming during COVID because it was one of the reasons why Henry Cavill couldn't come back to do the uh, Snyder Cut reshoots. So this has me very excited about the fact that I don't have to wait another year to watch season four of Cobra Kai and season two of The Witcher. And I know that we've talked so much about um, we've talked so much about 
Cobra Kai, but if you guys have not seen The Witcher, please do. The Witcher season one. It's a great show. Cogiste ahí con la boca abierta. Sorry. Um, it's a, it's, yeah. it's, a, it's, a, it's a, <laughs> <laughs> I'm tired, guys, sorry. I'm tired. Um, but it's a great show. Uh, it's a strong show. It has certain scenes that are very uncomfortable to watch, but give it a try. It's very, I think, I, I don't know a lot about the books. Cobra Kai? Oh, you mean The Witcher? The Witcher. No, Cobra Kai. Uh, uh, that's a coin to you, Witcher. Oh, Valley Plenty. The Witcher tiene unas escenas que están tan fuerte, tan fuerte. Um, mm. No, y cu cuando, cuando Jennifer se transforma, que le quitaron, mm. que, que le quitaron hasta el bibín. I mean, it's like, oh, oh, oh. No, ta, ah, te acordaste ahora, ¿verdad? Eh, como un poquito, y ya, wow, wow. Sí, sí. Sí, pero eso no es como que, ay, oh, Dios mío. No, esa no escena, like ese, esa escena estuvo. Ah, bueno, if, if, it felt, if you felt like that, that's okay. I, I, mean, ese, I, I felt ese it. <laughs> I felt <laughs> it. Ese es tu view, exacto, exacto. It's um, your stuff. But uh, yeah, uh, I would say give it. I don't know a lot about the books from The Witcher. I know what I've seen from the game because uh, John has The Witcher 3 and he plays it a lot. He, I really, I love Henry Cavill in the show. I know a lot of people love him as Superman, but for me, him as The Witcher is his top performance. His top, 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 the best performance he's ever done, in my opinion. Uh, and, I love I when he's could, like, I... and I love when he's like, fuck, <laughs> all the time. <laughs> Fuck. 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 You want to what? No. Fuck. <laughs> what? <laughs> Fuck. <laughs> Pero for me, yeah. for me, it's my favorite performances of him. I, I think it's his best performance, honestamente. Yeah. Um, and the season finale of Lucy for May 28th. Oh, Detective. No, yeah. No. I don't watch Yo, por poco me comes. <laughs> Wait, I don't what? watch I don't watch Lucifer. Uh, John watches it. I'm not. I'm not a fan. Por poco me comes. I don't understand how. Porque está con la boca abierta, chico. Ah, okay, okay, okay. <laughs> <laughs> Sangana. <Ay>, okay. Me gusta esa con. Sangana. But I'm, I'm excited really for the Witcher. I'm excited for the Witcher. I'm excited for Cobra Kai. Um. Finally. Cobra Kai never dies. Cobra Kai never dies. Oh, yeah. Yes, I say. Quiet. Quiet. I'm excited. I'm excited for that. I really want to see more. Okay, here's the here's the reality. I really want to see more of The Witcher than Cobra Kai. I see. Because we got three seasons and we're gonna get a fourth one of we're gonna get a fourth one of Cobra Kai. We've mm -hmm. only gotten one season of The Witcher, and a second one is about to come in. So I'm excited to see all those spells, all those beatings, all that and Jennifer a, and, and Gerald. Coming, I can't wait to see Jennifer. She she was my favorite character in season one. It it was a character that I I I know how she looks in the game, but how she looks in the show, she starts out very different. E every episode in my mind, I was like, how does she transform? How does she how does she transform to what yeah. I'm doing? And it was. Mira esto. See, there we go. Henry Be Henry's best performance was in Count of Monte Cristo. I haven't seen that. Now we got to see that movie. Because I have Mission no Impossible. idea that, that well, existed. That Mission good. Impossible. Mission Impossible, he was pretty good. He was good. Go and be Go and be de Josh Whedon. <laughs> not going to trust anybody. Yo siempre he dicho que he could have been the perfect liquid snake. But then he had to be snake as well. It looks like Mario to me. Guys, hear me out. Espera, espera, espera. Brother. Guys, guys, hear me out. What? If they do mm -hmm. a live action Super Mario Bros. film, he looks like Mario. <laughs> like a fit Mario. Picture it. <laughs> Get Mario trans gets transformed into a fit Henry Cavill, oh, and he could goodness. still pull it off. Picture it. Yes. But then it would have to be like a little bit of mature Mario. Ah, sí, que lo hagan. Yeah. So. You know all the jokes that I have from Mario just because of things that I see in stories, and I'm just like, eh, you know, <laughs> doesn't make sense to me, pero para adelante. 
He was 18 oh, wow. in that movie. One of his first ones. Jesus. <laughs> after that, at, after that, he went to Spartacus or Spartans. I think it was was it Spartacus? Uh, uh or um, um, Ozzy or anybody in the chat. I saw him. He, he for was the first time in Superman. He was on an HBO movie. I mean, a uh, uh, series. <laughs> um, was it um, Spartacus or was it? It was it was a Rome type of thing, like a Greece type of gods and stuff I think like that. The, I think it was Spartan. The show, you mean? It was like yeah. an effect too. Yeah. I think it was that one. I don't know. Yes, like Katrina La. She used like to be HBO. in that show. She used yeah. to be in that, in that show as well. Henry's Deep Voice. It's me. It's Mario. It's a me. I, no, I mean I made it worse. Oh, you gotta do it like the Superman. Like it's me, Mario. It's me. I don't know. <laughs> Guys, picture it. It could it's work. Me. Honestamente. Mario. Honestamente. It could work. <laughs> Every time I see Henry Cavill, especially con el bigotito, I always think of Super Mario. I can't take it out of my head. I'm sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. But yeah. Um, yes, mi gente. That's gonna be this all. is it for the news, and then we got now what we always do every single week before we go out, and then we're gonna have one more thing that we've never had since we haven't had in a while. Oh. We haven't had in a while, Yo. but first, <laughs> this time Ash is actually gonna start it. Yeah, yes, go, Dolly. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, guys, so that is all that we have for the movie slash TV universe. Very productive week for Marvel. I mean, the entertainment industry. Thank you so much. Oh, uh, yeah. Now let's move on to the last thing before we close out the show. Episode 19 of TLU. Let's talk about it. Thank you for being here. Review oh, wow. of episode Yay. five of the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Yay! Okay. My thoughts on this episode. I have to say that the episode, start. it starts out strong. And then at the end, I feel like it's okay. I understood why they had to change the story a little bit because they are setting up everybody for the finale. Uh, my favorite parts of this episode, I would have to say, is John Walker. I felt like his whole performance in the uh, Wyatt Russell's performance in this episode was great, especially in the scene where he finally gets confronted and suffers the repercussions for what he did in the previous episode, mm -hmm. where he basically tells the government, you made me do all of this. Yes. And you can sit down and you can't sit down and watch this episode and say, oh, you know, that's not true. That's not true. So yes. this episode also leaves the, the door really open for John Walker to come back. And I do have a feeling that he might come back for the season finale and have an epic battle with mm -hmm. either maybe Bucky, maybe Falcon, maybe both, maybe the girl who is the leader of the resistance, which I always forget her freaking name. Kali, yes, Hayden, I think it is. Um, I also one or, one or the other. I yeah. I can't really remember correctly. So we'll, I like. Well, I'm gonna look for it while while you do that. So I like I like that this episode left the door open for him to come back because even though I know a lot of people hate him for the role that he did, I am interested in seeing John Walker come back as a dark Captain America. Carly and Carly, thank you. And I we I was also discussing the possibility with Angelo about the Dark Avengers team to be set up for future MCU projects. And that's something that has me really excited because lately I've been really into this whole seeing the superheroes being, you know, dark and gritty and not so polished slash perfect as we usually see them in either MCU movies or shows. So I'm really excited for that whole setup. I have to talk about the cameo. Spider Popo. Que la que hay. Thank you for being here. Es la que. Que es la que hay. Ya tú sabes. Bien y tú. Working through it. Um, estamos hablando ahora de Falcon and the Winter Soldier y después after that we're going to wrap up y nos vamos de aquí. He looked at the chimp. 
Okay. <laughs> es Henry um, Cavill, Henry Cavill. <laughs> sí, sí, sí. Like Crimson <laughs> um, so yeah, I'm happy with all of that. Also, I have to talk about the cameo. There was a lot of hype on, on social media. I espero que salga pronto. Um, I, there was a lot of hype on social media. They were hyping up a very important character that was known in the comics and it was going to make, you know, their debut in the MCU. And I recognize the actress. I recognize the actress. I did not recognize the role. And that's something that's not bad. It's not bad because I really do feel that it is a cameo more for people who love the comics. And the cameo that we see in this episode is Lady Hydra, right? Mm -hmm. Is Lady Hydra. She gives a card, apparently, to John Walker. And that's what might establish the possibility of the Dark Avengers coming into the picture of the MCU. So for me... There was too much hype for that cameo. If you're not if you're not a huge fan of the comics, I think people were going to be like, "Who the hell is that?" Because it was between her and the guy from Winter Soldier who we see at the end. And I told John, if the cameo is the guy from the Winter Soldier, I'm not too hyped about it. Not too hot. Not too hot on that. So I thought she was great. I thought it was interesting. But again, it's more for somebody who really loves and knows about the comic books per se. And we we have to see how. She is going to be involved in future MCU projects because if you guys didn't know, this character was supposed to actually appear in Black Widow, but since yes. Black Widow was delayed, they actually moved her cameo, her big surprise, her big reveal to Falcon and the Winter Soldier. And now we have to see if, in fact, which has always been my theory, if they did any reshoots for Black Widow to fix that in any way, shape, or form, which I think they did. I, I really think they did. They either did that or deleted the the scene completely. Yeah, possibly, so. possibly. Um, another thing that I liked about this episode was the fact that I feel that each character uh, has received closure or they're getting close to getting closure. I know that Bucky has. I know that Sam has. And I really love his dynamic with Isaiah. I think that I, yeah. I, I think that Sam understanding why Isaiah is the way that he is, but also saying, you know what, whatever, I'm going to be different. I'm going to start taking responsibility and I can be a black Captain America because that's the elephant in the room. Like we got to talk about it. That's the big elephant in the room. The issue here, and the I say, issue. Oh, Miraira, and I the say issue. Issue, is that Sam is black and people are not accustomed to seeing a black Captain America. So Now Sam is fully, you know, he he he's taking charge of that. And I really can't wait to see his suit in the next episode because the, the cliffhanger of this episode was that he gets a box from Wakanda because Bucky asked for a favor uh, of Wakanda to make him a suit. So on the next episode, what suit could that be? What suit could that be? What suit could that be? I've heard what I've suit could That's yeah, I heard I heard that there was a leak of the suit, but again, I'm not a person that's particularly uh, interested. I'm not gonna watch it. I'm not gonna I'm, watch it. I'm not particularly interested in seeing leaks of the show. And I think I I think in a way the whole experience with WandaVision, I, I wouldn't say it tarnished my experience in seeing the show, but it made me really aware to <clears> not <throat> a rat's ass about what they say on social media and and what I think that's exactly what's been happening. Like mm -hmm. people say nobody's talking about the show. Exactly. Because People are Vision shutting up and yeah. watching. Because WandaVision destroyed their experience. Even though it was a good show, it destroyed the experience and it destroyed the hype. It destroyed their anticipation. It destroyed their privacy to their minds and trying to, you know, uncover them on their own, you know, wait for the next Friday, you know, yeah. be at peace with what you have in mind, discuss it with your close ones. Not everybody in the web and start deciphering and destroying the experience exactly. for people. Because when, when there was no social media, the hype and the sense of discovery in movies was even higher and greater and more gratifying. Yeah. Now it's, it's like, like everything is a like, fucking leap. Yeah. And it's like, I think I was telling you and I was telling Angelo, um, Before when you used to go to see like a series or a movie before, if you guys look for trailers that were done in the 1990s to to 2000s, the trailers are re really mediocre. They're horrible trailers with like really awful music, 
that probably doesn't have to do anything with the film. So before we would rely so much on that aspect of uh, this is a crappy trailer, so I have to see the film or maybe people were automatically turned off to not see the film, but you would go and see the film and it would end up being great because my experience growing up, I just knew the movies that were the the latest releases because we used to read um, the the newspaper. We used to look for yeah. La Tanda en los periódicos, like the. And the, honestly, the you showtime. would you would go to a movie because of an actor. Exactly. Because you love to see Jim Carrey in the film, Tom Hanks in a film, Wesley yeah. Snipes in a like, film, in Eddie Murphy house- in a film. Like in my house, it was always Jim Carrey, Jake Gyllenhaal, anything that he did. My dad was like, I don't care. We're going to go watch a movie. Yeah, Eddie, same, like I'm Eddie the same Murphy, with Jim Carrey. Eddie Murphy, like you mentioned, um, um, Leonardo DiCaprio after Titanic. So it's changed a lot. And I really do think that, you know, social media has. Uh, uh, I, so Z Lazy Pan says, before I continue with my thought, I always say to myself that there is an antagonizing character that the role is make me hate them so much. The actor has done an amazing work for how well they made them. And I love it. I love it as well. I, and for me, I think Wyatt Russell, if, if you were to ask me who's like the best character slash MVP, it's Wyatt Russell. It's Wyatt Russell for me. Yeah, I, uh, I, I see why people might... Um, I slightly disagree, but I agree as well. Mm-hmm. Like I understand that the story is between Bucky and Sam, but, but this is also portraying America. Yeah, and I gotta say it like that: White Russell is representing America mm-hmm. in the show. Yeah. And uh, again, you know, in reality, there's a lot of things that America is and does, and is hiding. So that's why, and I'm gonna say it once again, like a broken disc. That's why I am very attached to this show. That's why I'm very uh, uh, personally uh, uh, affiliating a lot with the sentiment, the emotion, the reactions, the actions, anything that happens is social aspects in this show. I am extremely related to, and I can actually empathize a lot with this. I did empathize with Wanda, of course, with, with her depression and all that kind of stuff, but it actually separated itself a little bit from, uh, you know, the the with the superpower with the cosmic type of, of thing mm-hmm. here is very civilized it's like down to earth it is our earth it is you know a common thing that we see in our world outside of trying to defend the earth from extraterrestrials and stuff like that yeah so it was very grounded and you know to uh put a cherry on top you got super you got heroes super soldiers but you still got our heroes you know, and I really enjoyed this episode, even though it wasn't action packed. It was just a, a a a open breathing area for our main characters, especially the uh, the one thing that I actually enjoyed a lot. And it was there was a couple of lines and I think I mentioned it in Reload. Um, mm-hmm. And it was one where Bucky and Sam are uh, I mean, pff, wait. Yeah, Bucky and Sam. Why did I say that? Yeah, Bucky and Sam. Bucky and Sam. I was like, why did I doubt what I just said? Yeah, uh, in the training where uh, Bucky said to him, like, when Steve told me that he was going to do this, we discussed why was it going to be you? And they were planning already in giving the shield to Sam because if you guys think about this, it looked when when Steve was going to give the shield Something happened in the timeline that we saw an endgame. And apparently, the knowledge that the Captain America had, which was old, was knowledge that was shared to Bucky as well. Mm -hmm. So it's weird. I'm not quite sure if the conversation happened between that time and then it jumped. And we actually never saw anything that happened up until the point where he came back. Yeah. And the discussion was had where... That old Captain America that actually lived his life with uh, Agent Carter Mm -hmm. uh, saw how Isaiah and how society was treating people with the, the, you know, the suppression, the racism and all that kind of stuff that was happening because he saw all this. That's the reason why he said, Sam, the shield is yours and not Bucky. You are you need to be the face of America. You mm-hmm. need to be what I was and more. 
You need to mm -hmm. be more for the people that you're representing. Yeah. Be America. Yeah. So that shield for him carried a lot of weight. So that's why in this episode, Bucky explains that when Sam, Bucky, when it's like Sam, when you gave out that shield to the government, I felt like it was, I was destroyed and I was disappointed in myself and in Steve and in you because if that meant that Steve was wrong about you, about how you would have carried the shield all the way to, you know, uh, an evolution or a revolution into a positive way, then it means that he was wrong about me as a human being that can change from all the killings, all the murders that I'd done, which technically was not under my, I wasn't saying, I wasn't sane when I was doing that. I was under control of Hydra, but it was still my face. It was still my looks. It was still my body. It was still my hand. It was still my gun. Mm -hmm. Like I was pulling the trigger. And if I can't change, and if Sam can't change, I can't change. So was Steve wrong? So that, what he did actually carried more weight than we knew. Mm -hmm. So it actually brought it back all the way to Captain America uh, the first movie, the first Avenger. So, and as you said, I think you mentioned it, Captain America, uh, uh, Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I think another show is due for actually a second season, you said? Yeah, I always had a theory. I always mm -hmm. had a theory or a wish that possibly Falcon and the Winter Soldier, and I think I've said it in every episode that we've talked here and in Reload as well. I've always said that I I, I, I feel like the show needs a second season because I don't think that in tomorrow's episodes, it, it can be an hour long. I don't think we're going to get the closure that we fully need for the show to work because if they only do one season and they close it out tomorrow, it, I think we're going to still be halfway there's still a lot of ground to cover and um they were actually discussing the possibility that uh this show and uh, i think secret invasion i'm not sure which other show are more likely to have a second season not so much wandavision because wandavision is basically getting uh her sequel with uh dr strange so yeah i don't i, I don't upset. think yeah and i don't think wanda it's hard to imagine how Wanda could have a uh, standalone movie. Mm -hmm. it's, it's hard to envision. Not that the character can't hold out on his own, but Wanda, I don't know. Wanda is more like a such a cosmetic, a cosmic character that if there is a movie that she should be in it, it's going to be put together with other heroes as well. But it, it would have to do with, in part, with the Eternals. Uh, so it's kind of, it, I would like to see if that happens. I would like to see if that happens. But guys, this episode was great as well. I love the depth in it. I love the heart to heart that this episode had from beginning to end. It delivered a lot more explanation that we did need. Um, and we're just missing a little bit of Russell. Um, but We'll see what happens in the next episode, which is tomorrow. Tomorrow is the season uh, finale. Yep. And and uh, we're gonna Guys, watch. Tomorrow is uh, fa the Falcon and the Winter Soldier season finale. There's a new episode of Invincible coming out. That if you guys have not seen Invincible, please. It's already out. Train. It's already out. Oh, yeah, it's right. On, it's on Thursdays. Oh, right. I forgot. So that's already out. And tomorrow, guys, if you guys forgot. Tomorrow, Mortal Kombat comes out. Oh my God! On I, HBO oh Max. Oh my God! Are on we HBO. Sleep today? I mean, you have to sleep. I get in at twelve. Yeah, but we, 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 you want what do you want to watch? Uh, we'll talk. I about don't. It. We'll talk about it when we end the stream. Um, but, uh, <laughs> Mortal Mortal Kombat is going to come out tomorrow simultaneously in movie theaters and HBO Max, and I heard that. Apparently, the actor who plays Sub Zero actually signed a contract for four movies. If this one does well, so that's guys, please let him make let him do well. Please remember, <laughs> but please, it has to be a good movie. Knowing please, that, it has to be a good through. movie. Okay, here's the fact. Here's the fact. Okay, if this is true, guys, remember <laughs> the studios. <laughs> Your soul is it's mine. mine. Low, yeah. low, so, low. What I was going to say, guys, please. And it's going to be the spotlight of the week next week. Mortal yes. Kombat, obviously. So please, guys, here's what I'm going to say. Support this film. Go and watch it. 
Don't be too hard on it. Here's the reason why. It's Mortal this Kombat. is a, a, no, 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 no. Listen, seriously, listen. The, the this film was made as an attempt to actually revamp this series. Mm -hmm. Now, if the movie does great, there's more budget that they can put to these films. Budget. This is keyword budget. The budget for the film was a certain amount that they did good with it in this film. Mm -hmm. Now, if this film succeeds and over succeeds the budget that they have, we could have a much better film next time and a larger budget for special effects, for more training, for more characters, for more everything. So don't be too hard on this film if it's not good. I'm not saying that if it's bad, don't say it's bad. If it's bad, then yo, fuck that shit. But <laughs> you know, if it's a good, decent film, you know, it's good. You know, I, I, that, I can get I honestly think I'm gonna like it. I know I've heard certain yeah. things from you know, possibly the story and characters in here and there, but for me, if it has good fight, it's more first of all, it's Mortal Kombat. Second of all, if it has if it has uh, good fight sequences and if it has gore, I'm gonna be okay. I'm gonna be okay. it better have gore. <sighs> it better have gore. Um, yes. I'm just gonna read the the. Do you have anything else to add for Falcon and the Winter Soldier? I think no, I fucking love this show, and I'm never gonna stop saying this. Um, honestly, uh, in my opinion, it's still a better show than WandaVision, and I'm not gonna. I'm. It's it's again for the same reason that I just explained. It is because. It deals with more civil things that we can actually, that I can actually attest to and feel, you know, attached to. And it, there are similar situations that we go through and I'm aware of uh, on a daily basis. Uh, so I can understand where uh, this show is coming from and I'm more attached to it. I loved One Division as well. Um, but this one, if you tell me between One Division and this, I will probably go with this just for the reason that, you know, I can just affiliate myself with this even more. GG. G, G. And that's going to be all. I'm just going to check the comments really quick. Um, no, that's not going to be all. Don't forget. What? Don't forget. Pero déjame checar los comentarios. Okay, okay. En la maleta estaban los cuchitos de mezcla, por eso no le enseñaron. En la maleta, en la maleta. En la maleta, en el briefcase del Falcón. Ah. Bendición, papi. Ah, papi está por ahí. Keanu Reeves dice. Keanu Reeves también, que he said, like, anything Keanu Reeves, they're going to be watching him. Y mira, a ver si dice. ¡Moro con Oh. Ay, Dios mío. Entonces, what else? Mira, Metaverse dice que he's Team Scorpion. ¿Tú sabes qué? I'm, I, I'm Team Scorpion slash Sub-Zero porque I feel that they're going to be the backbone of this film. Y va a okay. estar bien bestial. Y I, estar want bien bestial. To, I want to say this. Bien bestial. Metaverse, Metaverse, tú sabes de Mortal Kombat, ¿verdad? Tú, tú, tú sabes que tú sabes que tú eres de Mortal Kombat. <laughs> Uh, so the man me says, am I too late? Oh, man. We're about to wrap what it up. What do you think? <laughs> what do you think? Ah, it's been yo. two hours. We're about to wrap it up. <laughs> yes, sir. Okay, okay metaverse. metaverse. Here is my theory. Metaverse. Between you and me and everybody else that wants to pay attention to this, <laughs> I hope you guys do so that you can have your word on it. Tiren el clip. Tiren el clip. Clipelo. <laughs> Clipelo. <laughs> I threw this theory ayer. Because when I was el watching lunes. Cultura Secuencial, el lunes, el lunes, I was watching Cultura Secuencial, <laughs> right? No se they, they put the trailer again. I had not seen the trailer since the first time, and they put it again. Y yo como que, deja ver, porque I'm not, like, watching it. I discovered exactly what's going to happen in the life of, of, of Scorpion. And the theory... Of there was two theories, right? There's two things that happened to Scorpion in different universes. One, guys, the person that actually kills um, Scorpion's family in the lore. For those who don't know, Scorpion, like uh, Hanzo Hasashi's real name, uh, Scorpion is his fallen demon name, mm -hmm. but his real name is Hanzo Hasashi. So. 
one of the lore, uh, one of the uh, storylines says that the true killer of his family is Quan Chi. Quan Chi is a sorcerer from uh, Nether Realm that also serves Shao Kahn. Where Shao Kahn is the villain that was in the second movie of Mortal Kombat, which is Mortal Kombat Annihilation. Mm -hmm. um, that's one of the that's one of the um, uh, lures, and he actually used a spell, one of his magic tricks, to dress up and use the ability of Sub Zero and kill his family, dressed up as him, so that everybody else thought that oh shit, it was Sub Zero. No, it was Quan Chi, provoking uh, Scorpion. Uh, so uh, Hanzo to actually get killed and use him uh, and his abilities. It was Quan Chi, yes. Um, so the other one, that's what I'm saying. And the other one is that the true killer was not Sub Zero; it was his younger brother. Um, and the one that's still alive um, is uh, what was his name? Um, Hanzo Hasashi and Baihan. Baihan. Ah, see, see, Baihan see. is the actual name. Noob? The oldest brother is Baihan. Ah, there we go. Be there. Baihan. He becomes noob, bella. Noob. No, no, no. Baihan mm -hmm. still stays at sub zero. But the younger brother in this part of the lore is the one that kills Scorpion's family because he wanted war. He wanted rage. He wanted to kill, you know, uh, the uh, uh, Shirai Ryu, which is the clan of Scorpion, uh -huh. of Hanzo Asashi. Yeah. Um, so. Uh, when the brother, the younger brother gets killed, he turns into new Saibot. Ah, new think. Saibot. Now, going back into the trailer, the trailer me choteo a mi. Who is the killer? Can I say something? Can I say okay. something before you say that? I just want to say that if you've seen the trailer once, that's enough. Okay, if no you actually, way. if you actually sit down and watch the Mortal Kombat trailer, frame you're by gonna frame, you're going to see the out. whole movie. You're going to see the whole movie. Dale. Pero... Okay, so okay, if if you guys want me to tell you who I think the true killer is, let me know because I don't want to ruin it for you if 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 you feel like this is gonna ruin it for you. Now please I'm gonna give it one minute. Yes or no. No sé, no sé. Nadie dijo pío. Han dicho pío. I'm gonna say it. Lo voy a decir. I'm gonna say it. Ya lo vi. So. Ay, María. Ok. Ay, perdido, olvídate. Está bien. No one else wanted to respond and said no one else said no. So oh, I'll okay. take that as a yes. Yo creo que mami papi no, they don't have HBO Max, so I don't think they're going to watch this film. Yeah, nobody said no, so I'm just going to say it. It's Quan Chi. It's Quan Chi because when you see the trailer, you see Sub Zero coming out of a dark cloud. The cloud in the back is dark. There is no way in hell that Sub Zero can create a dark cloud nor come out of one. He uses ice. So, and the reason how I know this is because when I put down the theory that I had <laughs> in the chat, well, well, I'm gonna spotlight again. El guacho se puso pálido. <laughs> <laughs> because he could not say anything because of el you know el embargo and anything. Cuando yo puse eso, when I put it down on the, the chat, no you puedo were like, confirmar ni I legal. neither can confirm <laughs> or deny your theory. Yo como que te lo dije. Eso fue el lunes. Eso estuvo bien funny. That was on Monday. Y yo, oh, shit. Eso estuvo shit. bien funny. Y eso, eso fue como que, ok. Yo, eso fue de momento. Yo, I, I wrote it down, the theory. Wow, I think it is because I saw something that I didn't see before in the trailer. And it was the dark cloud that Sub-Zero comes out of. So I think the true killer is Quan Chi. And then it took him a minute to actually saw the message. And when he saw the message, he wrote right after Hey, he él hizo esto, él hizo. <laughs> y empezó. 
I can neither confirm or deny oh. that. <laughs> so yo como que, ping, so la So, it's yes, it's Quan Chi. I know it's Quan Chi, but I want to see how it is done. Because it was done once in live action, and it was in the uh, Mortal Kombat Legacy uh, show on YouTube that it's no longer on YouTube, I believe. You can actually just find it on Amazon, and you can purchase it. A really good show. Uh, I really enjoyed it. 10-minute episodes each. It was like 10 episodes every season, but it was pretty cool. Anyway, um, uh, we just want to jump in real quick to uh, throw it into the universe because we haven't done this in a while. Um, and I want to throw uh, two things in the universe. One, uh, let this rumor of Metal Gear finally be true because I think with enough concrete evidence and you know a lot of talks that have been coming and Konami is going to be appearing in this E3 for the, since the last three years, which was when Hideo Kojima parted ways with them. This mm -hmm. is the first time that they are in the E3 since then. So that can only mean three things. One, they are about to announce a Metal Gear Solid remake that has, quote unquote, based off what David Hayter said from his source, which is he is the voice of Snake. Uh, he said... <laughs> um, who is Konami? <laughs> yes, que, yes. A ver qué dice. Mira, ver, ellos se que, ellos, ellos se quedaron en la isla de ya no, de, ya nadie te quiere, nadie te quiere. De la isla ya nadie te quiere. Ah, yes. Uh, but based on David Hayden's stories, apparently there has been a Metal Gear Solid remake at work of uh, in Konami for three years now, but it's for the very first Metal Gear Solid in PlayStation. Uh, so the Shadow Moses game number two. They're going to introduce a, a new game of, of Yu-Gi-Oh! Uh, because that is actually the company that creates the, the game of Yu-Gi-Oh! I hope it's an RPG type of game of Yu-Gi-Oh! Yeah. Because I have a lot of Yu-Gi-Oh! I freaking enjoy Yu-Gi-Oh! I, I love Yu-Gi-Oh! <laughs> and number three, they're about to announce a completely brand new game because they have been out of the gaming industry for like the last three to four years because uh, they had focused... You know, as a surface, they have focused on their pachinko machines that is a gambling machine that they have. And they actually used uh, an updated versions of the storylines of Metal Gear Solid 3 to be a story. Every time you play in the pachinko machine, you put the slot, whether you win or lose, the story of Metal Gear Solid 3 is in it. Uh, so, a new pachinko machine. Pachinko, exacto. Yeah, so one of those three things, that's why they're going to the E3 this year. Um, so yeah, uh, that's one of them. Picho, <laughs> pi, pachingo, <laughs> vaina, pachingo vaina, vaina, pachingo vaina. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, the other one is, um, I would like to know, and I would hope that coming next year, and this is just me throwing it out there, I hope that next year, we are finally moving a bit forward, even like a big taking bigger steps into moving out of what we're going through in the world, like mm -hmm. COVID and everybody being inside or not, not, not even inside because we're not like that, but you know, things getting better because right now there are still things that we are limited to do and the freedom that we can take because of what's going on. And now we're getting the vaccines, but we're still getting like side effects from vaccines People are still dying, not at the rate that, you know, is to scare somebody, but, you know, that one in a million person can also be you. Uh, so I'm not saying don't take it. Just do your research. Know what's going on and know why is it going on. And, you, you know, play it safe. Be safe. There's like three to four different vaccines. Uh, make sure to take yours, whether you believe in it or don't believe in it. You know, it's a thing that is actually true because it's worldwide. It's not just... Uh, uh, the regular flu, which even the flu is a real thing. And mm -hmm. in like the times where medicine mm -hmm. was poor, people died from it uh, a lot. Now mm -hmm. a flu is just, pff, cogete una cold and flu y ya se te fue. 
Exacto. Mm -hmm. Like that's simple yeah. as that. Or go to sleep. O tomate una china. Like, uh, you know, those things uh, find, uh, you can find natural remedies to them as well. Mm -hmm. But, you know, be careful, be safe, do it not just for you, for the, those who are around you, for your family, your friends, your loved ones. Be safe. You know, please do that. Um, and lastly, number three, I want an invincible season two. Oh, I think that's gonna ah. happen. That's gonna happen for sure, Papa. Done. Yeah, I'm done with the throw it into the universe, man. I feel so good. I hadn't thrown it into the universe in such a long time. <laughs> I mean, in the show, in but I'm throwing stuff in the universe outside of the show. Outside, but offline, offline. GG. But thank you, everybody. Se acabó. It's Se acabó, over. Mi gente. It's over. It's over. The shortest thank one we've done since we actually started no, this. Wow. Really yeah, but thank thank you wow. to everybody uh, for joining us on this lovely Thursday pre-season finale of Falcon and the Winter Soldier pre-Mortal Kombat weekend. We hope that you guys have a great weekend. Que se disfruten the season finale of Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Y uh, what the? The uh, Falcon, and, Mo the Falcon and the Winter Soldier. Y I hope. <laughs> Let, I, I'm crossing my fingers. I'm throwing into the universe that Mortal Kombat is going to be a good film. If it's not good, yes. it's at least going to be enjoyable for me that I'm a huge fan of the video games. So thank you for joining us. Uh, don't forget that you can follow us on Twitch, Facebook, Instagram, YouTube, and Twitter under the Legacy Universe. If you guys want to check out this live, it will probably be up uh, tomorrow on our YouTube channel, The Legacy Universe Live. And then I'm going to publish the highlights probably during the weekend uh, so that you guys can enjoy it on our uh, YouTube page. Uh, don't forget that we have new merch for you guys, which is right over here. You can get our Legacy Masters collection or you can get this new update where we have From Our Land to the Universe uh, t-shirts uh, with our astronaut with the Puerto Rican, Dominican, and United States flag so you can rep your pride. And then we also have the Legacy Masters Horror Section t-shirt uh, with a design by Saturn underscore Strawberry who did an amazing job. And we have a Throw It Into the Universe t-shirt. Yeah. And uh, don't fret about the link. All you have to do is go to www.tinyurl.com slash TLU merch if you want to get your awesome merchandise. Also, don't forget that on our YouTube channel, we finally have the video of the unboxing <laughs> of the Show 21 Jackie Robinson Deluxe Edition. John was very excited, and this was a highlight from an almost <laughs> five-hour stream where John was yes. creating um, a stadium last Tuesday here on Twitch using MLB The Show 21. So uh, I also want to give you guys a quick uh, reminder or a disclaimer. Uh, tomorrow, there is not going to be an episode of Reload via the Puerto Rico Comic Con. Uh, so we couldn't schedule uh, to be all together to do the live. So that's going to be moved to next Friday. So episode 35 of Reload is not going to be tomorrow. It's going to be next, next Friday. Friday. Next Friday, we're going to be live with you guys talking about news, our favorite news of the week and entertainment, gaming, video games, comic books, TV shows. And uh, just we're not going to be talking about Falcon and the Winter Soldier next Friday, but we might talk about something else. Uh, so, yeah. And then for mm -hmm. we can still talk about it, depending on how it is. Yeah. And then for uh, Spotlight of the Weeks that have been redeemed via Legacy Universe points, uh, we have Boruto, which we're going to talk about it in two weeks, uh, which is going to be either on May 5th or the 6th. Resident Evil 5, which was requested by Eggie's Dex. We're going to start playing that next week, co-op. That's going to be super funny. And then Kenichi, the Mightiest Disciple, is going to be on May 12th or the 13th. That was requested by B. Bolet. And Boruto was actually requested by John Cito Bonito and also... Shout out to the man, me, a.k.a. Bambi, who redeemed his points so that we can start playing Hades on our Twitch channel. So that is going to be all. Do you have anything else, John? No. Thank you guys so, so much for being here with us. Another day in a TLU. Let's talk about it. Thank you so much for being in this community. Uh, you are the legacy. Remember, you are the legacy. You're part of our legacy. We are all the legacy. Oh, so. Yes. We'll see you again on Saturday to finish off the last chapter um, of Little Nightmares. Yes. Yes, we're back on Saturday with Little Nightmares. And uh, on Sunday, remember that I'm going to post our new schedule for 
next week, which is going to yes. start with Sunday. We're going to be playing Cuphead, and we're going to try to beat Minga, the fucking B. The fucking B. Um, I also wanted to tell you guys, I'm actually going to throw a raid to Jeperes Bosques because he is playing Resident Evil 3. Honestly, Resident oh. Evil 3! So I'm going to send you guys over there. Please uh, say hello. Send him all your love. He's an awesome, awesome uh, streamer. And uh, I'm just going to send you over there so you guys can have a good time. So thank you guys for all being right, here. Guys. Have a great weekend. Mortal Kombat! Wait for the raid and here yeah. we go!